Welcome back to the weekly update video. This is the Gravity Orientation Orbits in the Upcoming Space DLC update for September 22nd, 2023. The first screenshot is by Schlompy When Gliding. Dear Stormworks, in this week's announcement post, we discuss some of the new systems and explain what to expect in the Upcoming Space DLC with regard to the mechanics of orbit and traveling to the moon. Stormworks Space DLC releases on the 12th of October. As previously discussed, space and Stormworks will not be a true planetary body simulation. There are apparent limitations. The moon is a, in a fixed position directly above in the sky, and the world is a wrapping grid rather than a spherical wrapping one. So, Stormworks in space is just a new moon island high in the sky then? Well, no. And there are some cool new systems which model gravity, orbits, and planetary bodies, which results in a simulation that appears to observe many of the rules and effects of physics found in planetary body simulation. Gravity. Gravity and Stormworks. Space is derived from the distance to the Earth and the Moon. The pull of gravity fades with distance with a physically accurate equation. And the next screenshot is by Arai Op. Elliptical orbits. As the Earth rotates, there is a centrifugal effect. Objects would travel in a straight line except for the effect of gravity accelerating their path towards the center of the Earth, and thus curving their path. This acceleration due to gravity is constant. Motion in the horizontal plane is actually moving away from the center of the Earth very slightly. And as this horizontal motion increases, the acceleration away from the center of the Earth increases. This acts in the opposite direction to gravity. The vertical acceleration due to horizontal motion is inversely proportional to the distance from the center of the Earth. So as you travel higher, there is less acceleration. This effect introduces elliptical orbits. To achieve a circular orbit of constant altitude, you must have 
equal force due to gravity and horizontal velocity, and also have zero vertical velocity at the same time. Next screenshot is by Stramiku. Planetary body rotation. The Earth rotates one revolution every day. As you launch from the surface, you launch with a horizontal velocity due to this rotation. This also means that to remain at a fixed position above the ground, you must also be traveling horizontally so that one revolution is also made every day at around 300 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. This velocity balances out the effect of gravity, achieving geostationary orbit. And the next screenshot is by S7R Laser. Navigation. We are adding a new astronomy sensor that provides coordinates that better explain your location in space. The area between the Earth and Moon is mapped. Some navigation type sensors don't work in space, such as GPS, which will stop working at a certain altitude, similar to the real world. The coordinate systems provided by the astronomy sensor are much more useful for understanding your position relative to the Earth and the Moon. As discussed, we are introducing world wrapping at the same time as space DLC releases, meaning traveling across the edge of the map will wrap you back on both the Earth and the Moon. This applies to quite a high altitude, but as you get deeper into space, the world will no longer wrap and you can travel infinitely. We can't wait to share the new update. We look forward to your thoughts and feedback on these new systems. Much love, Stormworks developers. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye. All right. Hello, 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 hello. So I uh, just finished up getting ready here, and we'll go ahead and we'll uh, play a little bit of the old works here. How's it going there, uh, CG? Uh, so CG had a question here, so we'll start off with that. Uh, the cat will move just like two inches. He has to be exactly where he wants to be, not where I want him to be. So usually it's laying on my mouse or my keyboard arm. All right, so CG had asked about uh, how I did the deck plates on Triton. So we'll go ahead and we'll build that up really quick using custom door panels. So just uh, just do a new build here. And I'll just lay out a floor here. So all right. So you're going to use the custom doors. So type in door. And you want to get these door frame corners. And you want to lay these down. And so we'll just try to make sure I align them correctly. So there's your frame. And then what you want to do is you want to find this door frame controller. That's how you lock it. It tells you everything it does right there. It tells you locks and seal state. You want one of these. So we're going to put one in there. All right. Next thing we need to do is we want to grab the door frame edges and we'll plumb those in. Like so. All right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to fill this area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick a block there. All right, and then I'm going to select it. We'll cut it. We'll paste it. All right, and so then what we can do is we grab these door panel edges. And we'll drag them, and we're going to leave the corners empty here. All right. And then we're going to come in and we're going to replace that block we put there. That was just a helper block to get it pasted. And then we want uh, these door panel corners. These door panel edges again. Door panel corners. Edges. All right, and then you can fill the middle with whatever you want. So I just do regular blocks. All right, good. So now if you really look, we have the door panel and we have the, the frame and we have the door panel on the interior there. So we'll go ahead and we'll get rid of this base. All right, and then underneath it, what you want to do is this panel will fall right in. So I'll just show you that really quick. So if we, so let's go ahead and we'll grab a toggle button. You can use whatever you want. You could use a microcontroller, but I'm just going to use a toggle button. Put it right here. And I'm going to drag the toggled to the lock seal. 
And I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to do default state to on, so that when this spawns, it will lock it so that uh, it doesn't flood. So we'll hit spawn. All right, as you can see, the door panel is in there. If you check this part right here, the frame controller, as you can see, lock is true and seal is true. So that means that the door is sealed up. All right, if we press the button, the door will disconnect. And if we look there in the door frame controller, you'll see seal state is uh, true, lock is false. It's still sealed because there's no place for it to go. Let's uh, raise it up a little bit. Let's raise it up and we'll add a couple legs here so that this can fall through. All right, spawn it again. All right, so you just heard when it spawned in, it locked. If we press it, you'll notice it falls through. So we don't want it to fall through. I don't want it, you know, when I disconnect it, I want it to sit in the doorway. So what I usually do is I use these pyramids and I put the pyramids in the corners. Make sure they're on the right body. So uh, this one's on the wrong body. So you see here, so what I would do is just go like this in the corners to make sure they're on the right body. And then cut out these corners here. And then take pyramids, put the pyramids in here. This is just the lowest profile, so you can't see these very much. That's why I use the pyramids. You can use whatever, but the pyramids are uh, least visible. All right, so now, now the pyramids are in the corner. We spawn this. When I press the button, the door falls, you know, just a little bit, but it doesn't fall in the hole. So that's how Triton does it, so they don't fall in the hole there. And then you can just use a crane to pull it out. Uh, let's see. What else? One thing we found out on the live stream is they are directional, so you have to make sure that they line back up. So if you're going to pull this door panel, what I did was I just drew a little line, so you could do whatever you want, like just paint a couple blocks different color like that, and you know that those need to align. So that makes sense there, uh, CG? How's it going there, Daniel? What's happening? What's happening? Yeah, just if that makes sense to you, CG, let me know. Uh, I'm just okay. All right, good. So that makes sense. All right, so I did a bunch of work, not too too much, on Triton last night and Shroom. So if you looked at the screenshot for the video, that <laughs> YouTube always screws up the screenshots for the videos. The let me turn the music on. I'll quiet it down. But the um, put yesterday's on, so it always. It takes a while for it to update on the link. Um, so I did some work on Triton yesterday. I did some work on Shroom. Got that a little bit better um, set up and installed. So I'll show you what I did on Triton and Shroom. All right. So let's spawn it up. All right, so let's put the mast up. Did a little bit of mast work. I installed all the antennas on the mast. You'll be able to see those. As you can see, we have all the video and um, information antennas sitting on the uh, on the main mast now. So those are all installed. That I think that looks good and it's functional. We have the installed uh, drone pad right there. When in the drone room, a uh, pretty easy way to hide the drone attached system there, like a little partition wall. And then the drone controller is in here, as you can see. So that's all installed there. Let's go ahead and... Try to, not necessarily auto land, but auto... I'm trying to get uh, the Shroom to auto track Triton. I'm struggling a little bit, but... I can still manually land it, so we'll go ahead and uh, launch Shroom. Spawn, please. Thank you. All right, so Shroom is there. We get Triton underway. I'll uh, I'll get off all the uh, infant electricity and everything here. There we go. That would give us a little bit of a more... Realistic case, I'm trying to make sure this is all tested so when I do a career build series with Shroom, it works. And I'll have to use a bunch of things like infant electricity and nonsense to get that to work. Let's go back up to the bridge.
So mainly all I've really done on this is that let's get let's get underway and then we will uh, get my own ship where things are. <clears throat> we'll get underway and then I'll show off Shroom. How big is the engine in Shroom? I believe it's an eight cylinder. Wanted, I wanted really good fuel efficiency, so and I wanted um, I wanted really good heat management, so I went with an eight cylinder so I could keep the RPS low. I tend to like to try to, if I can, do my propellers up to uh, a nine to one gear ratio. So it's a nine to one gear ratio on the propellers. So that way I can make the RPS uh, just under six RPS. And so it keeps the RPS nice and low. So the fuel burn's pretty low and the, uh, it's very fuel efficient. That thing could probably sit there for an hour at least. Uh, probably longer now that I'm thinking about it. But, um, and it doesn't produce a, you know that much heat. So it's pretty, uh, pretty good for what its job is, you know, to go and sit on station. It's not super fast. Uh, it don't need to be too fast. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit non-aggressive on its motion. So let's go down there. Let's read some chat. All right, let's uh, go to the drone room. Drone room's up here. All right, so in the drone room, we'll go one, two, three, four is the code for shroom. One, two, three, four, power that up. We'll go AP, engine start, stop. Current heading's 130, so we'll put that in 130. All right, heading hold is engaged. RPS is up to operational RPS. I do need to fix this at some point, so what I'll do is I'll, whoop, there we go. All right, and we'll go up to, say, 200 feet. All right, so if I zoom in this camera, so the default position on this camera, I moved the other cameras up so they're all at the same level now, and that way we'll get a bit of composite image. So if you look with the zoomable camera here, that's gonna be the bottom limit here is right there as you can see they all align so that gives us a better picture of what's going on uh, so the next thing we want to do is I have uh, Triton broadcast two positions it broadcasts the position of its rear pad and its forward pad so if we go in here to the radio and we go 67 86 uh, we'll do 85 for a 67 85 That is the rear pad. So 6785 is the frequency for the rear pad. If we go to radio, it's gonna give us the bearing to the rear pad of Triton. And then what I wanna do is it's 222, so we'll put in 222, 222, enter that in. Now I wanna go to nav and it will station keep and it will go to Triton. It is not that fast because it's not aggressive. I could make this more aggressive. I might um, increase its, uh, how much it wants to tilt, but it still does almost double Triton speed. Yeah, it's difficult to uh, move containers when the container mover is less than the container, and that makes sense. You know, it's, they're, uh, you know, it can be touchy, but it works. All right, so we're headed towards Triton here. So Triton's already quite a ways away. Right there, you can see Triton in the distance. All right, and so we have Shroom falling Triton. So like I said, it goes about twice the speed. If I manually fly it, I can get it going up to like 40 something knots, a little bit more than that. That, uh, so, you know, it's, it's not blazing fast. I don't need it to be blazing fast. You know, a big part of building Shroom was to get 
there's shroom right there. Big part of building shroom was to get all the microcontrollers set up. So if I want to make a different version later, but as you can see, it's following us. It still does twice Triton speed, and kind of the whole point of it is it's you know it's its name stands for a ship based, a remotely operated observation machine. And so the point of it is, if we get a if we get a search and rescue mission. We're going to steam Triton towards it, and then we can send Shroom ahead to find it. And then once Shroom finds it, we can head to Shroom. So that's kind of the base basics there. Let me make sure that my cursor is on. I shut my cursor off when I'm making career build series videos, and I need to turn it back on. There we go. So you see it's following us there, and it will catch up. And so what I'm tr I don't necessarily want it to necessarily auto land, but I want it to... Um, it does a pretty good job of helping me. So, for example, it's going right to this pad right now, the rear pad. That's So the way this is working is the rear pad has a GPS on Get out of the way. A rear pad has the GPS on it. So it's given its exact position right here, as you can see. And it's broadcasting it via one of those two left antennas. And so it's telling... It's constantly reporting its position. That's the way the ADF system worked, was it reports its position. And it uh, tells it where where it is, and then it just uh, follows. So this system is important because, for example, when I, you know, when I would go out in a rescue mission with Katie did, I can use the radio to find my way back to Triton. Now, the ADF had issues because, essentially, what was happening with the ADF system, that was causing a lot of, um, after a little while, the game would grind to a halt. And the reason is, as you get, you know, since we're not near the Arctic, all that should be despawned. That shouldn't be in the world. So the game's not having to render that. The problem is this. With my ADF system, I had all of the ADFs as um, they were constantly on. And so that made it so that all of this area had to be loaded into the game at all times. And then it really, uh, oh, thank you, Citrus. Appreciate that. That really uh, was resource intensive. So I came up with kind of a good little uh, compromise. So what I do is all of the ground base stations that would be the ADF, they are now uh, essentially faked. So in the, in the bearing panel, I just put it, I manually put in their GPS coordinates, so it's like a GPS, like if you had a GPS system in an airplane nowadays, what it's doing is it's essentially, you have known coordinates, and the known coordinates are programmed into the system instead of a radio. Did the same thing with the new ADF system. What I did so I could make the radio work on Triton now is, if you look at my frequencies here, we'll go back down, what are we going, 18 knots? It's catching up, it's doing 20 something knots, it's doing 25 knots. We go down to the drone bay. Uh, if we go down to the drone bay, you'll notice that the frequency for Triton is a four-digit number, The which is actually uh, pretty realistic to how they do them IRL. Like, uh, VORs and ILSs are four digits, so you'd have, like, 107.9 would be your... Uh, your um, your ILS. So you put in 107.9. ADFs are three digits. So all my ADFs are three digits. So like Draymore is 635. So it'd be 0635. So if the number is greater than 1,000 or less, you know, it's if it's between 1,000 and 9999, it will default to the radio. So if I put in a frequency that's four digits, essentially, it will... Uh, activate the radio system and so what's happening is the GPS again on the pad of Triton is broadcasting its current position through the antenna and then that's coming up to Shroom and Shroom is saying okay you are there I'm here this is how I get there so it's figuring out how to get there from there so it will follow Triton the problem is you know with a PID what's going to happen is as you get closer and closer and closer to the point, it's going to start to, uh, it's going to be less aggressive with trying to catch up. And so I have to keep increasing the p-value to get it so that it will still, uh, you know, follow Triton. So, for example, like right here, it actually, before, when I was doing some testing yesterday with the default p-value numbers, it was actually 
slowing down and matching the speed of Triton back here. Now you notice it's still gaining. We're still doing not quite uh, double Triton speed, but close-ish. Let's go down. And so we're going to check our most recent bearing. Most recent bearing is 233. So we'll just change our heading to 233. 40 looks low. Is 40 low? Let's see. I can't tell. So you see, as it's getting closer, it's picking its nose up to try to slow down. So it's going to go right to Triton's pad. You know, as you can see, it's a little less aggressive. It, it uh, starts to slow down a little bit early. And then it's not a big deal. I can manually land it, which I actually usually prefer is just do it myself because, you know, that's part of the fun for me. Just watching, you know, I've talked about it. I don't like being a passenger. I want to be the driver, you know, and so it's, I get very bored just being the passenger. But as you can see, it gets us really close where our shroom is now. <laughs> I, I just think it's funny it, it following us like this. At that, you can kind of see, you know, there it is just, you know, following along. And so that's kind of its job is to just go out there and to uh, to be an observation platform. So I'll go ahead and I'll grab it and I'll land. I can also land on the front pad. So the front pad's its main home. That's where it can be stowed and can just stay there. So we'll land it on both pads. It is more difficult, not necessarily. It's uh, because this is a symmetrical vehicle, it, it translates sideways just as well as it goes forward back. It's symmetrical, so it really doesn't matter. But um, really doesn't matter if it lands sideways or frontwards, but like a lot of the other vehicles, you would want them to land frontwards. So see, see how much I can tip the nose down. I can be a little bit more aggressive here and get us landed. And then I'm going to transition to the camera off my right there. And I can see the pad. So I still have the autopilot going for everything. And I'm just overriding its controls so that it will, uh, you know, so that I can land this out. Actually, I'm going to take off altitude hold. I want, I'm going to leave heading hold on. I'm going to leave the nav on. It's, you know, it wants to do what I'm doing. It's just uh, not being as aggressive as I am. And so we'll catch up to this and I'll land on there. But this is full speed for Triton, so. There we go. Yep. I think we got I think we got grabbed. Yeah, we got grabbed. There we go. Alright, we're connected. So shut down the engine. Wanna make sure I shut down all the modes because this will remember what modes are in here. And so that is off now. Power off and we can go out and check it. And there it is. So as you can see, I can easily come in and land while Triton is moving. So pretty simple, and the Shroom can operate on either pad. So kind of a kind of a neat little toy. It'll be cool. It's kind of a start starting vehicle that uh, hopefully I can use a bunch of these micro controls. I'll yank them out and stitch them all together, and then when I want to build another drone, I can do that. So let me catch up on some chat. Uh, I have no problem reversing that thing. Um, it's not its not great because it tries to lift it up, but you have to go slow. The other thing is having proper gearing so you're going slow enough. You know, and balance. Yeah, you know, like my water trailers for my all my tractors in game, they're all they all weigh an enormous amount. Like those uh, let's see, what are the fourteen thousand gallons? So it's let's say seven pounds per gallon, so fourteen thousand times seven. So we're talking ninety eight thousand pounds one of those trailers weighs that I tow with my trucks. The the thing is you need to have the gear ratio set so that it's actually going slowly and it's giving enough power. And the tractor should be reasonably heavy too, but it doesn't have to be super duper heavy. I dropped the gaming on it, yeah. I never really liked the gaming on there, so it was mostly when I when I first started, 
I do have a webcam, but I, I don't, don't do any face stuff. Um, when I first started the channel, I kind of put it on there as so people knew what I was, what most, what my videos would be about. So, but I never liked the gaming on there, so I got rid of it. Yeah, I think the drone, drone, drone's cool operating from that uh, vehicle. I like that. I think it worked out pretty well. So it's like you can see it's it doesn't want to get all the way to the pad. I could probably make it a little bit more aggressive to get to the pad. But again, at the end of the day, I'm going to want to land manually. It's like watching something automatically do it really doesn't interest me. And so that was that was full speed. Of course, the, the water's calm, but I've landed Katie with, uh, you know, with rolling seas pretty well before. And so this will be good for, like, sending out and going and uh, find a target. So, like, for example, you'd say go to, a, like, a little real-world uh, situation here. So, like, say we were going to have a rescue... Triton's only going so fast, and so, like, we'll go right where I'm already pointing. So that's set in, power. So, like, we're headed down somewhere over here. So, like, say this was our search area, so we would set a waypoint, enter that in the keypad. We would go ahead and... We would go ahead and we'll detach. All right. And we'll go ahead and we'll set the altitude to, uh, say, 500 feet. So, the, you know, with Triton, you see how tall Triton is. We're at about 45 feet is about the, you know, say the bridge level. So at 45 feet, you can only see so far. We're now at 500 feet, or going to be going to 500 feet in this. So you go like that. We'll go back in here. If we switch to GPS, you notice that gives us the coordinates I just put in. So 214, we'll type 214 in there. Heading hold, and then once I do nav, it will initialize, and it will go to the waypoint. And so this is going to now go do our searching for us. All right, and so off it goes, and we can go watch it go by. And so that's good. that's pretty much its job. You know, is to go out there and to do the search, is to help with search. It can be a camera platform. It'll be kind of fun to have. But that's its main job, is just to go out there and to do that. There it is. So as you can see, it's off. It's off, heading off to the waypoint I just set, and just a nice tall camera platform. At some point, I want to make a fire drone that will have a water container and it will fly out there and we can put out some fires. There's been a couple cases, for example, I was on Triton and if I don't have any, say, Katie did or something, and even if I have Katie did, I might not have Katie did's Bambi bucket. So I can't fight the fire with the Bambi bucket. So I think it was this, this one here. And so I steamed Triton all the way across to go put out the fire. You know, theoretically, I could send the drone to go at least put its complement of water on there. I also think with the drone, I could sit, I could uh, just have it hover on top of the water and suck up new water. So that would be kind of a cool system. So maybe the next drone will be like a modular drone. That would be cool. When the pressurization update comes out, I want to do a unmanned submersible. That would be kind of cool to do. So just a bunch of stuff. There it goes. So kind of a cool vessel. I'd like to make a faster one, too. You know, the one reason I didn't want to make this one too fast is you end up needing a bunch of fuel. This thing has fuel for days. That thing, I think I convert to gallons. Yeah, I think I convert to gallons. This thing has like 150 gallons of fuel, and it really burns very, very slowly. Now let's go down the drone controller and we'll look. I think it's still set to gallons. So it has 148 gallons in it presently, and it started with 152 gallons. So it used four gallons to go from here, land on Triton, and now it is over here. So that's four gallons of fuel, which is what, uh, three times that. So we're talking 12 liters. So it used about 12 liters to do that. So pretty fuel efficient. Again, welcome back to Captain's Crew, Citrus. Yeah, it's essentially a GPS. If I if I fake it, it's a GPS. So Triton is more using the ADF system because it's using a radio. But um, 
you know, the real ADFs were just a problem with the game. I bet I could probably fix them if I just made them not static. Uh, no, no. If I, maybe if I made them so they, they could despawn, but the, the whole reason for the ADF is... I forget how close you have to be to something in game for it to spawn in, but the ish the thing with the ADF system is the two huge antennas. We talked about this how like say what you have one huge antenna here, you get a 20 not uh, you get a 20 kilometer ring, and then if you have a 20 kilometer ring ADF right here, as long as those two are touching, you can read from here to there, and so that gave it a nice long range, and that's how you actually do it IRL is you'll go from station to station to station, and as you get between the two stations you switch to the next station. And so I used to navigate up to the Arctic. I put a couple land stations on this, on here, and I would navigate all the way up. And so for example, Shipbreaker here, Shipbreaker had uh, an ADF. And so when I would travel, especially with Katie did, if I took Katie did up the Arctic, Katie did had a small antenna like, uh, like Shroom does. So Katie did's range was essentially 20 kilometers. So KD did would have to jump from this station to this station to this station to this station to Tajin. And then when I took some of my bigger vehicles, because they had huge antennas, they could go from here directly to here, directly to Tajin. So they, they didn't need as many stations. So I kind of like that system. That's more realistic, but, you know, kind of has what we has. And then the main limiting factor with Shroom is the video antennas only uh, go 10 kilometers. So there's no point in me putting a larger antenna on on Shroom because it's only going to be able to go 10 kilometers anyway. So allergy to kill me this morning. I'll uh, just catch up with some. Uh, I did not stream with a webcam. Nope. Why do you ask that? I thought you asked, do I stream? Yeah, I like the drone view as well. Yeah, I like that's that. You know, I, I, of course, I've spent a lot of time in simulators, and I like having the actual simulator box. I think that looks a lot better. That's how they do it IRL. They're actual modules. So, like, for example, if you have a problem with the module, they'll pull the whole box out. You know, let's... I'll show you some of the simulators I've been in. They're pretty cool. Let's see. So these are level D simulators. These are, this counts as real flight time. So, for example, when I went to the airlines, the you learn in one of these level D sims, you learn in one of these level D sims and they're up on these uh, hydraulic jacks and it, it will it will articulate and so for example you, when you slam in the brakes it will actually lean you forward so you feel like you're leaning against your seatbelts and so if you fly in one of these level D sims that counts as real flight time so for example the first time I had ever stepped foot in the Embraer 145 was when I was when it had passengers on it you know the first time I ever flew the Embraer 145 it had passengers on it. So you do all your training in one of these. So that's the outside of the box. Let me see if I can find the inside of the box. Inside of the box looks like a regular airplane. It's exactly one to one, 100 percent perfect to the real one. You know, so that's that's what the inside of the level D sim, sim looks like. You can see that's the monitors up there. But this it looks like it has every part of the actual airplane in there. You know, all the, it's, none of it's faked. It's not like these yokes are of lower quality. It's identical. Every button feels the same. That's, that's why it counts as real flight time, because it's that realistic. Like, here's, here's a level D. So that's doing a, probably a max level braking here. If you slam on the brakes, that's what the sim does. Let's see if anything else cool. So like that's the interior of that's not a level D, that's a flat one. Level D because it moves, it articulates. And then you have some new ones that are neat. Like see this this cut type of sim is good for panel work, like learning your panels, but that doesn't count as real flight time. You know, then they have some stationary sims. Like this is a stationary sim here. You can see it; uh, it's flat on the ground, and so it doesn't move. This does not count as real flight time. Still, work is useful. So that's kind of like what I model some of this. Like you can see this one here. 
that's kind of what I modeled that little um, little shack on is you'd have the actual shack that looks like the airplane because you want the visibility to be the same. So that's uh, kind of what you do that. I'm going to throw you guys a quick ad. I need an allergy pill or I'm going to die, so I'll be right back. I'm back. Quick an allergy pill. See if I can survive without. I'm gonna mute myself every two seconds for a cough or a sneeze or something. What was too low? Uh, Shroom's main purpose is to uh, be an observation platform. So, like, for example, the example I'm using now is it's heading out ahead of me. So here we are. Get out of there. Stop, stop, stop. Uh, it's heading out here ahead of us, and it's going out to the waypoint. So, for example, if there was a transponder mission, it would go out there looking for the craft. So it's pretty much just a camera platform. <coughs> How do you slam the brakes on a plane? What do you mean? You just apply the brakes quickly. I don't know what you mean. How plane has plane has brakes. You just click on the push it, push the pedals and hit the brakes. How's it going there, Oce Oceanic? <coughs> and Citrus is off to eat. All right, I'm caught up on chat. So let that uh, marinate over there. Kind of trying to figure what I want to do next here. So let's take a quick look around Triton and see what Triton needs. I'm going to do a little Triton work here. A little bit of paint here and there. So we have fuel in here. Ballast is good. This number is still reading wrong. So I'm going to I'm gonna bring up a... Um, I just do a, like a Google Drive for a lot of my builds. And that way it makes it easy to be able to see what I need to work on. So And then I can put a checklist on there. All right, let's see. All right, so on the bridge, I need to fix the uh, mast number. Okay. Ballast I did, so that can be checked off. Fuel I did, that can be checked off. It's nice to check things off. Uh, that should be done. That's fixed. Okay, I'm just checking, looking at my list here. Alright, so I need attachment systems in the hangar. Alright, so I've got a couple things I want to do on here. I'm just going to walk around and figure out what I want to do on Triton. And then I can go from there. All right, this pl this place could use a little bit of filling out. A little bit of this needs to be fixed paint here, so we'll do that. Let's 
do uh, fix paint under engineering panel. Okay. All right, so pretty good there. So I moved a microcontroller up here. I changed a little bit of paint up there. A lot of stuff's unnecessary. Like this is gonna get filled out more. I'm gonna put a kitchenette in here. Kind of just put a couple things for the flavor. You know, these are all state rooms. They're pretty much identical in here, but there's uh, what, six state rooms, something like that. Two, four, six state rooms. I mean, nope. Yeah, so I might put a little kitchenette in there. But here's the main galley and kitchen, and then here is the drone room in here. Let's see what else I need. Might work on some more crane attachments. That could be good. So let me put on. Let's see if I can find that. Mast engineering. Crane. All right. So I made a crane category. So go ahead and bold and underline that, and put on a checkbox. All right. So I want to build more attachments. All right, so currently what we have is we have this winch module. And so this is what uh, it used for winching. And then, I don't know where the, okay, it's still attached. So this is the hard point connector that is on there. I'm trying to think what else we need. Kind of looking around. So here's Remora, Remora fits here. Might get rid of these winches. Wow, I'm off. <laughs> Brighton does not have an auto stop feature. But uh, Remora fits here, and then I'm trying to decide what else I want to put in here. So uh, these panels should be working. So this is my ground power. That is my. Uh, this one's for Triton. This one is so. This is in. That's out essentially, and that is uh, deaf. There. That's the controller for this panel. That's the controller for this panel. The controllers for all of the containers. I think this system's working. I'm not sure. We'll have to check it. This is the refueling system, and power system for the pad, and then we have refueling here for Remora. That's uh, refueling for that craft. It's up, let's go down. Uh, so, I, I showed this up, that's the anchor locker there. Garage, so the garage needs a bunch of stuff like attachment points and the garage needs a, the ability to refuel and power and recharge vehicles. So that needs to be plumbed in here. So I think I have that on my list. All right, so we have a little bit of work. I kind of want to break the work up. I don't like to work on Triton too much. The def system still needs to be put into place. Yeah, so I think that's uh, that's a good start, at least, some of that. All right. And then I might deal with the smoke as well, so all good things to work on, so... You can see, uh, you can see how far ahead of us Shroom is now. Shroom's entering the the search area, so like if that was a search mission, Shroom is already on the scene. And so like now, I can be searching for the target. Well, uh, you know, while Triton's fair a bit behind me, and then once I find it, I just sit and hover. And so, like, we're down to 140 gallon, 140 gallons. So we've used 12 gallons to go from here to here. So let's do 12 times uh, 3.785. So 45 liters we've used. So not too shabby. And it still has, you know, a good. You can see how slow the fuel is burning down on that. So it's uh, good fuel. Uh, amount of fuel on that. I don't think it has the ability to refuel. I need to put that on there. 
So Shroom needs that as well. All right, so we have a couple things to work on. Let's go back and we'll leave this running for now, and I'll go work on Shroom. Actually, I'll, I'll recall them. There's no point in having this stuff running. So. All right. So I have no way to refuel this at the moment. I need to put that in. Can't go there. That is okay. So right here, I I see where I can refuel it. All right, good. So right about, uh, so right here, this thing will ever let me, oh, don't do symmetry, please. All right, so right there is the fluid port. Eventually my allergies will leave me alone for a minute and I can uh, live. Where the best way to put, best place to put this is gonna be? Um, can I get to there? I doubt it. Now, what are you? What are you? Let's see. I'm just digging a little bit. See where we're at here. Okay. The, uh, one thing I wish they'd put in is like I want to be able to bend this. I can't. All right. So we'll start here. I'll see what I can get what I can do. Putting refueling on there. Kind of breaks my brain. This is structural stuff and I don't want to be digging into structural stuff, so... Yeah, it's not that I would need the structural stuff, but it kind of breaks the brain if I don't put it there. <clears throat> this area I'm never going to see, but it still bothers me. So there is the refueling port for that. So that should hook in to that. So the refueling is set up. Let me check stream, or chat rather. Yeah, it's uh, kind of rainy gross here too. So I just looked outside. I'm like, ugh. No, I'm good, thanks. I don't need you send mailing. <clears throat> um, look at the uh, standby. I got a question about uh, build review. Uh, when's voting close? 
Voting closes, uh, close midnight. Okay, let me close that then. I forgot to close it last night. All right, I will close that out. Take a quick screenshot of that so it's locked in. All right, let me quickly uh, make something up for that to show that it's closed. I forgot to close that last night. I'm gonna make a quick post on that. Oh, that makes it easy. Okay, good. I was afraid we we're gonna have like a four-way tie for the last one or something. Oh, that's it. One, two. D and G. Okay, D and G. Okay, good. Uh, one of them I already have a video done for because one of my disqualified and that uh, I already already did a review on it so I just haven't posted the review I wonder if I still have the review what is the name of the, that one let me look real quick okay I'm just finishing up this message, guys. Um, you know, reminded me that uh, I didn't close the channel, so I need to close this up. Almost ready here.
Yeah, video will be whenever I can get it done. I'll try to start working on it. Maybe some today, maybe some tomorrow. All right, so that is posted there. So that um, the top four for the uh, build review voted by the community are the barrel, followed by the flying crab, uh, followed by uh, Reacher and um, the EDAS, and then my pick for uh, fifth is the Sea Breeze. If yours didn't get uh, in there or picked, uh, please resubmit, and then um, you know so that uh, you can you can resubmit it right now if you want to. Uh, actually, no, not right now. I have to uh, I have to reopen it. So after the video, let me uh, I'm just gonna uh, make sure I block off people. Okay, good. It's still blocked off, so you can't post anything yet. When it reopens, if uh, your build didn't get picked, uh, resubmit, and uh, that way it likely will be. All right. So, uh, yeah, so that should come out soonish. I'm going to try to work on it some today. Tomorrow, we'll see. But uh, I just forgot to close the channel. I couldn't remember if it was today. Tomorrow, I was having it closed. All right, good. So this is refuelable now. I forgot what else I want to do on this. All right, so this is refuelable. Hmm. Let's check something in the autopilot. Alright, so if we go down here, uh, that's, is this the autopilot? No, yeah, I'm not in the autopilot. Here I am. Okay. Right here. Alright, so this here is the station keeping here, and so I'm limiting it to 4040, and I'm going to go up to, let's do, oh, I don't know, 65, 65. 65 65 okay so i'm gonna update that i'm trying to get a little bit more speed out of this i don't need this thing to be an absolute stp demon so it's gonna start because it's uh it's primed so i need to go on triton and shut it off oh. <laughs> you run over my triton yeah i get on the uh, scum there we go okay so um it's pre-prime, so that thing's gonna crash. God, I lose my own way on my own ship that I built. Oh, get, come on, get! All right, so see, we're we're almost out of range here, so I need to quickly shut all this down. Okay, and I'm just gonna go back here, and if I can, it's gonna be out of range, so it's gonna be challenging, but. Um, Okay, so now it's not up and running. It, if I, it's still, it's very staticky. We're probably getting close to 20 kilometers away. There you are, big beautiful beast. Um, King of the world, Jack. Um, let's see. So it's probably getting pretty close to being right on the edge of range. So I need to get that set up here. Yeah, it's probably close to being out of range. I can just barely see what's going on. What's the range? Let me see. I've got to be pushing 20 kilometers right now. Yeah, I'm right at 20 kilometers, so... Let's see if I can't get this to work. Uh, let's set a, an altitude of, oh, I don't know, I think 40 works in the hangar. Uh, 130 is the hangar heading. And let's see if I can fly this without seeing anything. <laughs> and hopefully. Where's my fuel low? No, it's just it's not reading it. Let's see. Okay, I'm out of range now. Alright, so I'm officially out of range. Let's just bring Triton back. I think all that should have reset it. Yep, everything's reset. Okay, good. So, let's see. There we go. Alright. So now it has... Um, so now it, it's capped It's capped a little bit different. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to zoom in to... Uh, don't, don't... Just land for a second there, guy. Just land for a second there, guy. Oh, come on. Behave. Straight up, fly right. Straight up, fly right. There we go. Acting the fool. Land for me, please. 
What the? Right, I gotta move my camera so I can see what I'm doing here. going on here oh uh, how did this get reset wrong there we go it's backwards see this is the issue is when you if I don't shut off all my stuff and then reboot it it stays in the last state so that's the issue so uh, let's go down to what's altitude hold of 40 feet gonna do it now there we go okay everything's backwards so I'll fix that in a second I, I want to check one thing here so I'm trying to get this camera put the minimum zoom on this camera correctly so it should be right about there okay so so I need to fix that camera if you could get low enough I can touch the camera we'd be real we're, we'll be real good friends if you could do that Oh, you suck. Uh, back and forth, back and forth. 40's not low enough. There it is. Found it. I also need... Uh, it, does have a, it does have the ability to recharge. It does it on the pad. Okay, I'm going to head over there and try to... Get this camera fixed. All right, where? Come on, let me see the camera. It's not gonna let me see the camera. You suck so bad. This is gonna be hairy, hairy dicey. Nah, I'm not gonna be able to see it from the top, am I? Well, let me see the camera from the front. So. Yeah, I can't see the camera. All right. <laughs> Hell am I? Okay. Yeah, so like I need to, it's Triton's having an electrical problem right now. So I need to, what the hell was I going to say? Um, so I need to make sure all these modes are off, and then engine start stop is off. Okay. Power off. Why is that not setting the power off? Very friggin' strange. All right, so I'm just gonna stick a slap a dial on here, and we'll just figure this FOV out. Figure this FOV out. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The annoying thing is I had to make a bunch of edits on the drone controller here, all these panels. So I need to then rip all these out and uh, have them as a module. So. That's pretty close to perfect there. A little bit one tap, maybe. Another tap, maybe. Okay, that's pretty good. Point seven. okay. FOV right here, uh, minimum amount is going to be 0.7. All right, so that will have it uh, looking at the same range as the other cameras when it spawns. So. All right, we'll save. Uh, actually, I'll save this one here. All right, good. I also did this for the container mover. Change the speed a little bit on this so that 
I can more manually control this because there are certain situations where I need to, for example, drive it forward while the arms are working. So the arms move a little bit slower now so I can more progressively move the arms. And that allows me, say, for if I'm if I'm trying to, for example, let's do this. So if I'm lifting a container, So if I'm lifting a container, I can lift it a little bit and then push forward and then finish the lift as I'm pushing forward. So it allows me to help motor the vehicle where it is. And for like unloading, I'm trying to get this to unload. So it'd be like this and you'd back it out like that to keep it in line. So it gives me a little bit more controllability over it. Let's get this in the workbench. You want to do a couple things on this. Read from the chat. I've been working on Triton for years there, CG. It will continue to get filled out as I work on it. That's what I'm doing. <coughs> All right, so we've got... Uh, let me check my list, see what's most important to me here. I'm going to start working with some attachments here for the crane. I'm trying to think what else I need. I need a multi... I need just a multi-attachment rope. The nice thing is since we have the ability... Another good you know, update by the devs was the ability to set the rope lengths. That was a really good uh, update. And so I dig on that. I think how to set this up. That ah, can't go like that. One more. Okay, one more space there. Okay. I think the best way to set this one up. Right, I kind of want to make it first and then hang it. So let's uh, put that hanger in there for now. And then I will see how, how I need to set this up. So. so I think I want a hard point like that. Then just ropes on either end, maybe. I can double. I can double up the ropes. I'm pretty certain of. So I want to keep this compact, though. I want to keep this as compact as possible. So let's cut this. Move it up one rope. Because I was having issues where there are certain things I want to put into the garage, and I don't have the ability to do that. The way I have it. Might as well put them on that if I'm going to do it this way. Yeah, I might as well put it on there if I'm going to do it this way. thing I hate is I can't hide the little uh, pipe section there that annoys me. I wish we could hide that. <clears throat> Alright, so that is pretty simple there.
Maybe I'll put a hard point on there so I can connect it as well. That'll give it some versatility. Oh, flicky camera. You are the devil to me. All right, so that will uh, let me pick things up. We'll do a little test here. So let's grab this. I keep these as compact as humanly possible. All right, there we go. All right, so let's save this. All right, let's put something on Triton's deck to play with. I want to see if I can. I want to test a couple builds out, putting in there anyways. So here's the Amphib uh, car. So I built this a little while ago. Little amphibious car for doing some rescue missions. All right, now where's your center of gravity there, guy? Probably there, so. So there's the amphib car. Spawn all those. Yes, I saw that. Yep. The uh, I saw your uh, mover. Wait for those to attach. They will eventually attach it. I have it set up, they'll lie. They hit this and then they attach, so it's going to take them a second, but once they get close, they'll grab. There we go. Okay. You put the new uh, move, the new thing on there. Should get this one. Detach this one from being permanently set on there. So that's good. New attachment, new things on there. Yeah, so that was another great update the devs did was the rope update. You know, despite the grouchy people thinking that nothing, they never do anything right. But um, that was another great one where you can change it because we used to have to put little winches on everything. And so it's like you see how big some of these, like I have one winch on this panel. And you see how huge it has to become. You know, the hard point, all that looks huge. It's, you know, it's not... Thematically, it's pretty good because you figure it's be on the end of a crane, but it was um, it was a good update that you can now change the length of the ropes. Let's see, two meters, probably too little. We'll do fours. Because now by setting the hard distances, I don't need winches for everything. I can just use uh, rope lengths. And so that really helps to get things even. So, like I can double these ropes up. Like so. So that was a that was a really good update on their part. So they deserve their pat on the back for that. I, I stumbled in the grouchiness the other day, listening to the, some of the drivel out of out of the grouchy section. Still need to make my game review. I'll have to do that at some point. All right, so like those are all set to four meters. The nice thing with the Amphib car is I can load it right in the water and then drive it onto shore. Uh, this crane, because this crane has such a long reach, I can actually get pretty close to the shore and do it. All right. 
get a little pick here. I always like having picks when I'm craning things on and off. All right, so. You know, this can either go in the garage or there's also a spot that some cars can fit underneath the pad. So I have multiple spots. I don't like putting them on the pad when uh, I have containers on because I can't get them out of there. But, um. Yeah, you see that has a pretty good reach. I can still go a lot further with that. Like, let's do max reach. I'll show you how far max reach is now that I'm out of the seat. But it has a good reach, so I can actually get close enough to shore where I, even if it was like not an amphibious car, I should be able to put it in there. Come on, get on the ladder, get on the ladder. There we go. When I'm behind the railing, I can't click on the ladder, so. <laughs> like max extension for this is way the hell out here. So distance wise, this is probably about what I'm working with here. That's how far I can go. So I can get pretty close. Like I can get a reasonable distance from the shore. Like I could put it on any of that cliff face there and reach it off and get it out there. So this did not get finished as much as I had thought it had been finished. Well, like, you know, that's kind of the proof of concept is like, this one's nice. I can dump this right in the water and then drive it on the shore. So that was, that's the nice thing having a, a Triton is, uh, I didn't mean to do that, any of that. <laughs> I was trying to go behind it and jump off and I ended up just acting like a ding dong. This needs transmission work too. I could work on this. It's a little bit challenging with these amphibs because the, you know, when you're when you're driving as a car, you need to down gear it quite a bit, and when you want it to be a boat, you need to be up geared. So you need to have sometimes almost like a um, sea going gear there. I got a mess of this. But the nice thing, like I said, is you can just dump this in the water and have it uh, go. It will straighten out once I get moving, but I have to get moving first. And I'm kind of stuck in the water here. I have no clue what stage this uh, little car is at. All right, so that, uh, long story short, that mover works. So that was something I wanted to do. All right, so that... Uh, new attachment system is in there. Let's grab this off. This thing's been sitting here just and I rarely use it So every time I need to use the crane, I just end up taking it off. It's it has a couple builds that it works with But I don't use it very often so we'll stow it There we go that stows there And this one I want to recolor I might repaint them all yellow, but I haven't decided yet, so. Do kind of my industrial colors here. I think it's this one, yep, that one. So 
not too much longer till space DLC, which would be cool. that to be that color. No, not me. <laughs> Alright, so that will be the uh, color for that. Alright, good. So that's in. Let's see, what else do I want to work on on Triton here? Build more attachments. Okay. Fuel water separator. I think I did that. Build, you haven't done the build yet. Def could be done. Fix paint under engineering. Okay. Table, so right here, this should be. That should just be brown like that. Uh, kind of as I see these little things, I just try to add them to the list. Uh, this. This is annoying me, that green. I need to fix that. Or that uh, white. Should all be greened out there. Too bright when I'm trying to operate here. I'll probably do Lua at some point for some of these screens, but I just haven't got there yet. My Lua is getting better, but it's not fantastic by any stretch of the imagination. <coughs> that needs to hide a little bit better, but we'll do that later. Go ahead, sharpen the Liber up a little bit. I'm not digging the outline. The outline just washes it out. That's if you take a take it from a picture, it tries to do too much uh, smoothing. And I find it doesn't come out very good. Kind of sharpen it up a little bit. And a pan drying a lot of this or going back and re fixing it with some hand, hand stuff. B looks too fat. Let's see. Look better. Okay. Little details like this, like little things that you see that annoy you. Like, you know, I keep looking at the crane. It looks fuzzy because of all this shadowing. Oh, come on. I hate it when it does that. Come on. Like, it hard clicks it and it sticks on. It's very obnoxious. It knows when you're trying to move fast and then it's like, it's like, nope, screw you. That's better, I think. A little bit sharper. All right, I'm gonna fix the other side. All right, 
wanting to sharpen that up for a little bit. So that's done. Okay, good. All right, let's see what else I need doing here. Check some chat while we're going here. How's it going there, uh, Variante? Yeah, like too much of that. It's like some of the sharpening, I think. It's nice having some sharper letters. Like Triton, this, this, is a, this font is a pain. Like this has to be huge or else it doesn't look good. So like this one took a while to sharpen out and make it look good. And you have to get the... You have to get like the scale right, or else <laughs> this this uh, one's tough because of, like the little flourishes here have to be big enough you can actually see them, so it's tough. He's, yeah, like the rescue zone could be strengthened up a little bit, but I'll do that later. All right, uh, I'm trying to. I don't like to work on Triton for like hours and hours and hours on end. What I try to do is hit a couple things and then move on. You know, when you have a long, 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 long build, it's easy to get like just annoyed by it. And so it's better do a little bit and move on. That's like some people would grind on it. It's like fire truck to a certain extent. I was getting sick of working on the fire truck just because, like, you know, I start thinking of other projects and I'm like, I want to go do other projects. And it's like you get stuck on that. This I've been wanting to put this way. What is that? That's mass light. Okay, this is going under. Trying to get all my microcontrollers out of visibility range. So like, this is huge. I've talked about this. How like I love these big builds because I've got um, so much space. Like all of my upper microcontrollers go up here because it's like. You know, I'll, I'll show you, like, the microcontroller view. It's absolutely overwhelming. Like, you get into this. It's like, get into this. If these, like, back, uh, another great update from the devs. They had, they used to have, it would show you what direction the arrow, what direction these lines were going to, either to or from. And they were animated. And it was absolutely slow the game down. And so you had some people, like, Oh, what a waste of dev time to do that update. And, like, those of us who build big builds are like, oh, my God, thank you. It's made it so much more pleasurable in the editor because, like, literally it would take a couple seconds at least for it to, like, settle out because all of these all these lines were animated. And it's, like, little stuff like that that if you've never built something big, it you know, you know like, why did they bother with that? It's like, dude, because you built something big, it was miserable. So it's like all of these go to the bridge. So I don't want these lines crisscrossing everywhere. So they stay at the bridge. And then like the engine stuff's down by the engines so that they don't crisscross. Like you can see down here, like a bunch of the stuff is all down here so that it doesn't crisscross. And a lot of the engineering stuff is down here. Try to keep from crisscrossing. And you see what this stuff is up here. Uh, what is that? Linear speed. Why is this even up here? That's got to be old. What are you, sonar? Okay, it's not my sonar system. I'm trying to, at some point, replace all of everybody else's stuff with all my stuff, but getting, like, actually making, like, ship panels is going to, I don't know if I, I'm ever going to really be inclined to do that. Like, I don't mind some of the Lua stuff, but it's like I'd rather build, like, vehicles than do too much Lua, so do a little bit, but then I'm like, all right, I want to move on. All right, so that is good. Let's check my list. All right, so get rid of some more panels. That's good. The other thing that's going to be annoying that I need to do at some point is I want to go through and I want to get the physics sensor. Upgrade everything to physics sensor. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and save Triton. And I think I want to start working on something else. <laughs> trying to think of some things that... Trying to think of some more things that I need 
for our career build series. So let's let's grab a couple things. Cause I wanna be able to like I wanna be able to have you know, Triton's job is to be a home ship. That is where I'm gonna be, is you know, at my home and then whatever mission I get I wanna go take out. So for example, like I had I forget what I call it. So like I I really enjoy making these little vehicles that need to go inside of uh inside of Triton. I'm looking for that little Jeep I made. Here it is. Now CG's right there in the center. Alright, good, so let's go. Uh, symmetry. Okay, it has two there. Okay, it, this one's good. All right, so this one already has rope anchors. That was what I was going to put on was so that Triton can uh, lift this. <coughs> so this is actually a five-seat <laughs> rescue vehicle. But this, is, this can fit into things like um, Night Owl. So that's its little. That's its job is to just. I probably have the parking brake on. Five. All right. So this needs. See, the steering is very slow. So let's. AD. Let's go to twenty. And see how that behaves. Yeah, that's like, you know, some people were talking when uh, the Big Man Challenge, they were using my controller and they're having issues with getting, they were like, oh, I, you know, I can't steer enough. You just need to increase the seat sensitivity. You know, you, you, you have to work with both. You kind of work with the steering controller plus seat sensitivity, and that will give you the steering you want. Like, see, I'm doing max here. I don't want this one being too crazy because it's a little on the top heavy. Look at that drift. Uh, it's a little on the top heavy side, so I don't want to roll it. So keep this a little bit on the lower end, but. But, you know, you see, going to 20% made it, uh, you know, steer a little bit better. So that's that's one thing that's kind of tough for some people, uh, especially new players, is, you know, you have, to, you have to tweak and configure every vehicle. And a lot of games, they make it super arcadey, and they do it by essentially every vehicle behaves the same. And so, and it makes sense to a lot of people because most people will never drive, for example, a big truck. And so because they've never driven a big truck, they don't know what a big truck feels like. They think it's just a car, but a little bit slower. And it's not. A big truck feels, behaves differently. And so because they just don't know that, you know, they'll be like, oh, this, uh, your truck moves too slow or it's sluggish. It's like, that's how a truck moves. And it makes sense because, you know, they've never realized. It. And they'll go to another game where, um, you know, where the trucks essentially behave like cars. And so if you don't know how it's, you know, how it's kind of supposed to be. And so, like, anyway, so the kind of the, the point of it is the benefit of this game and what makes it sometimes challenging for new players is in order to get a vehicle to behave right, you might have to, you know, adjust 20 different parameters for each vehicle to get it to behave the way you want it to. But that's also a benefit that I can make my vehicles behave exactly how I want them. I can make a truck feel like a big heavy truck. I can make a car feel light, nimble. I can make a race car fast and darty, you know, and that's because you have all that that customization, you know. So like this uh, stability controller, you might have to adjust both the steering sensitivity and the controller. For example, like uh, some of my bigger, my trucks, they might have a seat sensitivity of 15 and a p-value of 0.75 because they're big and heavy and they don't go that fast so the p-value can be a little bit on the higher end uh, and they have a long wheelbase and then if you have a car that's a race car with a short wheelbase I think my race cars have like a 0.25 p-value but they have like a 20 to 25 steering sensitivity so each car you have to kind of tune and 
again, there are pluses and minuses that. The pluses being that you can make the car behave exactly how you want. The drawback is you have to actually understand the fundamentals of why it works to then be able to kind of set the system up. But like this now feels good. It's darty. It's um, a little bit more darty than I like. Maybe 20. Maybe I was liking 20 better. But uh, I think I was liking 20 a little bit better for steering. But it's, you know, kind of understanding the relationship. It's like the same thing with p-values. Like, you'll have somebody like, oh, I have a big ship with a 5x5. Five five. What p-value should I use? Well, I have no clue, you know. And then if you try using that same p-value on a car with a, you know, a two-cylinder one-by-one, well, the p-value is going to be different. Do you have a flywheel? Do you, what are you turning? You know, what's your gear ratios? All these questions matter. And so it's, you kind of have to learn the fundamentals, why it works, before you can really kind of tune it in. <clears throat> now to go in there. Owl. Yeah, I, uh, I went to the store yesterday and didn't get beer, and now I kind of want one. I'll have one tomorrow. But yeah, so this car is set up. It has the anchors, so this can go into things like the owl, the night owl. And it can uh, also be loaded into Triton's garage, so that's that's uh, something else here. So that's good. So let's save this up. <coughs> Mini Jeep, we'll call it. All right. All right. Let's see what else I have that I need to work on here. Can't think of any real. Big builds I want. I'd like somebody to start another challenge. I'd like JSI to do the challenge uh, review too. It'd be nice to get that going, have them get that going. Though I really want to get the. I want to get mushroom as refined as I can, and then I want to be able to use mushrooms, uh, microcontrollers, and then build more stuff so I you know if I jump the gun and go too early it becomes a problem where it's not ready so let's see Are you what do you have for rope anchors you could use some rope anchors here sir <clears throat> let's just drive it around make sure they don't hit sometimes going down they like to hit so I want to make sure they behave themselves Forgot. I forgot I had to make this one right-hand drive because the Japanese one's a right-hand drive. All right, let's see. Uh, start to stop. Parking brake. All right. I just want to make sure this isn't going to hit anything. So, like, this one has a much slower steering numbers on it because this thing only goes, like, 50 miles an hour. The real ones only go, like, 50 miles an hour. <coughs> What beer do I like? Uh, my favorite are dark beers, so I like a Guinness. I like like a um, Old Brown Dog or a Pig's Ear uh, Brown Ale. Anything brown, I, I I like a darker beer. Like this thing is at max, you know. So this thing, because it goes slow, it can have slow steering because you know you're not getting yourself in trouble. Uh, no, not really. I don't mix it with. I drank a little whiskey here and there, but I don't drink much. I drank when I was in when I was in college. I have no clue what's on my allergies. I I got allergies after having COVID a couple of years ago, and like something in my lunch kicked off my allergies. It's I went to the allergist and they told me it was like. Dust mites, dogs, I told them, yeah, dogs, whatever. Um, it's not dogs, but it's uh, it's like dust, it's it's a food, it's got to be a food allergy because it's like if I don't eat a couple things, some, some certain things for a couple days, I'm fine. Like I just had lunch and I had a sandwich with mayo on it and I had mayo yesterday, no issue. <clears throat> so I don't think it's like eggs or something and then it could be something the bread's bothering me, but I don't know. 
Yeah, like, uh, you know, like Boilermakers and stuff. But yeah, so this, uh, this doesn't seem to be having any problems going over terrain. Oh, there, it literally just hit there. All right, so I'm going to probably put them up on the bumpers. The back's gonna be a pain. The back, I don't think. I don't think I really have to worry about the back hitting, but we'll see what I can do with those. I think I, I have some places to put them. That's one of the things. That, like, if you worry about aesthetics first, that's like some people talk about. They try to get the looks first, and one of the reasons I don't do that is it's like you get the looks the way you want it, and then you have to change something. It really sucks. Where it's like I think the other way, if you do the functionality and then you kind of like okay this worked and then work on the looks you're like okay I already know this works I don't want to make it unwork and you're more attached to the thing functioning well than the specific aesthetic of it and that way it uh, it helps you not not go nuts when it uh, doesn't look right anymore <clears throat> like this you know I like the bumpers the way they were that's very Jimny bumper or not Jimny, uh, Acti Bumper. But like, that bothers me a little bit in the front. I think I'm gonna go up on that, so we'll go up here. I have space on the top for it, so they can go right here. All right, there we go. That way I can, uh, that way I can crane this on to, I could probably do single point on this, but, um, it's always easier to do four point. So this will fit in the garage. It should. Yeah, that should fit in the garage. So let's save that. All right. Packed the mini truck backup. It's called Pacti because it's my Pat brand with the um, Acti as the Honda Acti it's modeled after. All right, so I'm just trying to make a bunch of, yeah, all right. Uh, I'm just trying to make a, or work on a bunch of these vehicles so they'll work with Triton. So when I need a vehicle, I can pull it out and use it. I do like a McGillicuddy's uh, peppermint. How's it going there, Rasmus? What's happening? Hey, but I even have a site you can buy me a beer. Let's find it. Yep, I just uh. I accidentally clicked off you guys for a second, and uh, it, uh, I was afraid it was gonna go crazy. I think it behaved itself. Yeah, the website I, I have, it's called Buy Me a Coffee, and you can change it to Buy Me a Beer. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, that is going on here. So uh has some cool modules for this. So that would be kind of cool get the mini truck out on Triton because I have these modules. I have the fuel tank. I have the GPU, the uh, water tank for fighting fires. So, like, that would be cool. Uh, load the mini truck into Triton. And then go do some missions with it. So that's something I want to do. Uh, submarines. I'm going to do some submarines when I have the opportunity uh, when the update comes out. So this truck. That truck's way too big to fit. So I'm, let me see. Kind of go through backlog here. I want to get some of these things finished up so that I can just use them with Triton. So I want to see like some things I forgot about. I think this helicopter is set up to land on Triton. Let's uh, is Triton launched? I can't remember if Triton's launched. Let me test that helicopter. I think it's compatible. I want to check it. Bet you my allergies will go away. Test a couple things while I'm here. Let's go.
this should fit. I measured it. <clears throat> yep, that fits. So that can be lowered right into the garage. And then the garage is actually reasonably spacious, but you need all the center space to be able to drop them down in there. So like you could put, you could drop it down like this, but then you, you know, you'd have to park one here, park something there. You could park something here. So you have a good bit of parking in this garage. You just have to kind of be conscious of where you're putting stuff. And there's pretty much no, no question this is going to fit. This is tiny. Let's see, that fits. So. That also fits in there. All right, so that's good. Let's spawn this. I just want to check that fast helicopter, make sure that fits on Triton's pad. I'm pretty sure it does. I think, uh, yeah, uh, Chickadee is now, Chickadee is faster than that helicopter now. That was like, uh, this is, this helicopter works really well, but for some reason I'm just like, I don't know, it doesn't interest me all that much. And the thing that kind of kept this thing alive was that it is, it is, it was super fast. And now Chickadee's faster. That was one of the reasons I built Chickadee was to try to kind of get something that I want to play with that was fast. I'm going to close this door there. I fly better from first person. I can't do anything from third person. If I broke an electrical connection on Triton's pad, it can't be that because it would still be working. Okay, the lights came on. I was gonna say the lights haven't been coming on. There we go. Yeah, so I think this one works. Yep, this one's all set up to work with Triton. <coughs> yep, that one works. No problem with Triton. All right. I don't have a disc. Did I get did I put a disconnect button in this? No. Does this need the disconnect button? Did I put it in there? Science beep. No, I need to put a disconnect button in there. All right, so I'll write that out. I, I don't even know what I called this one. Fast helicopter, maybe. I'll make another drive for this, so let's see. Fast helo. All right. Disconnect system. All right, disconnect system. That's just to disconnect from the pad and it resets so that you press the disconnect and then it will auto reset. I need to do that on the uh, mushroom too. It doesn't auto reset. But, uh, that fits well in there as well. So like, yeah, that's like one of my favorite things is like I have Triton and then I just go back and make a bunch of stuff that works with it. I think that's kind of a cool concept to just uh, you know keep making things work in there. All right, let's pull that in. Just kind of going through back. I'm trying to figure out what I want to make. Like, sometimes I get, like, really hyper-focused on making something, and then, like, when I'm between builds, sometimes I'm like, ah, I can't think of what I want to work on. And so it kind of has to come organically when I just kind of feel like what I want to make. I'm also, you know, I think I'm going to get some inspiration when the Space DLC comes out, especially for pressurization. I'm going to start tackling some subs when that comes out.
need to start thinking off screen about what I want the next uh, build challenge to be all about. I did start working on this ambulance, amber lamps. It's based off the tow truck. This button here somewhere, I think. So here's the beginnings of the amber lamps. Kind of nice to have some of these things. Like I, you know, I really had no motivation to build a fire truck, and then now that I have the fire truck, I'm like, oh, that would be cool. We get a fire, I can go, you know, put out a fire with the fire truck. So sometimes it's build it, and and they will come. You, know, you build something, and then you kind of uh, looking forward to doing that type of content. This thing still needs work. This VTOL. I don't really want to work on it right now, but I'll see where it is. This thing is an absolute brain breaker sometimes to get this to work exactly right. So when it's not working right, I need a break from it to, <laughs> to get my brain right. Because it's an absolute pain if it's not working perfectly. And it's very touchy. So. And I have it. I have it so that I have to do like a hundred steps to get this to start. Like it needs pneumatics. It needs a bunch of things to make it work. So I kind of broke one of my cardinal rules of don't make it too complicated of a starting procedure when you're still in the testing phase because you end up like it takes five minutes every time you want to start something. This one is rather complicated, so. Park your brakes on, probably. Yeah, park brake was on. But the whole point of this is, because the devs made it so that you can't really deliver air cargo to BVG, which is the only real place that it's like reasonable and profitable to do, that was one of my disappointments with the Industrial Frontier Island being so close, was uh, it makes it so that it's like, there's no point to do any air cargo on these two continents because we don't have small vehicles. Like if, if, they, if they need to make some small air cargo that would be worthwhile. And then uh, again, I think Industrial Frontier should be the same distance, but to the south, you know, and then uh, like, I got a container for BVG out of FJ the other day that was, like, worth 50 grand. And so if you could take two fifty grands, that's a good profit to go up north with a big, expensive vehicle like this. But you kind of need that level of profitability to make it work. Oh, whoa. Okay, something got screwed up in this. I remember this was screwy before. Yeah, I was screwing with something, so... That's why I stepped away from this thing. Is it gets it, this thing gets really complicated really fast. So, but I, I have some ideas from working on um, the chickadee to work on that. So, I'll get back to it at some point when I'm not banging my head against the wall with it. Might look at the, see what some of you guys are working on. Let's look at some of the creations here that you guys have been working on. I've been getting inspired by some of your stuff. Yeah, it. I had it working pretty well. So uh, let me show you how Chickadee works. And this is what I think I'm going to introduce to that. Um, so where's Chickadee? So like wh what I did with Chickadee is this is going to be kind of the new way I do these VTOLs. And so if we look at the up-down, up-down I always use for throttle in my airplanes. And then when I go to a VTOL, I have to change it, which I hate. And so what I do is I do up-down re is reset 100%. So it turns it into essentially two buttons, up button, down button. And then what I'm doing that actually worked out really well is if we find the autopilot panel, we'll find it eventually. It's one of these. There's like the autopilot panel here. So if we look... So, 
so throttle's easy. It goes to an up down counter. You press up, it counts the up down counter. You press down, counts the down counter. The issue then is it's very jumpy reset with because it's going up one, zero, down negative one for your collective. So your collective is very jumpy. If you remember a couple of videos ago in the career build series when I used Chickadee, it was very jumpy. And I even mentioned I had made a new version of it. It just I hadn't been running it yet. And so what I did then was I come in here. And this is my collective control. So my throttle works with the, you know, with the reset 100%. And then what I did here was I do reset 100% still, of course, and I do one, zero, negative one. I do two up, down counters. So I do my up and I do my down, essentially. And then I add the two together. And what this does is it essentially makes it so that I can both control the throttle with the up down arrows like normal and I can also do collective progressively so it will slowly climb up and slowly climb down when I go to zero and so this system works really well to make it smooth like I'll show you so like I can I can use that throttle for both and then pretty much when I'm in vertical mode I want my I want my rotors at a consistent RPS anyway and I'm just using pitch to control the um, the motion. So when it's at a certain angle and a certain speed, it will uh, lock that out at essentially just under 60 RPS on the rotors. All right, and so let's go bang, bang, bang. So like this, uh, let's see, is it on my seat? It is on my seat, okay. So like I'm using the throttle now to just increase the throttle of the engine. You know, it's in its forward flight mode. It's, I'm um, just using the throttle regular regularly to do that. Now when I bring the rotors up, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply the brakes because it will automatically rev up the engines to give me 60 RPS on the rotors. So just put a little brake on. You can see it trying to accelerate me. I just have the brakes on, so I can't do it. And now it's ready to take off already. And so I am. So now I'm still using the same 100% uh, reset, but with that up-down collective, you, you notice how smooth it is. It works like normal because I have those double up-down counters in there. So that that's going to be the new way. And so I need to add that to the to that VTOL jet. And that will fix some of that system. I, I disconnected some crap for the roll. So the roll I screwed up. But that's how this works now. So that works well. But so that's kind of the new standard that I found that works really well to integrate both of those things in there. So that's what I'll end up doing probably. But this thing is screaming fast. This thing goes like 300 knots. Surprisingly fast. It's funny, sometimes you'll try to make something go fast and it'll be slow and you'll just like happen across something that's super fast. But yeah, Jet VTOLs are pretty complicated. Let's look at Remora real quick. I was, this was something I was thinking of. This was something I was thinking of reworking. It works so well though. Let's see if uh, Remora actually needs anything, or I'm just being picky. Probably just being picky. I have Triton sitting here, don't I? Let's. Uh, I'm gonna send Triton out, and then we'll go uh, hook up. I want to see if there's anything I want to do to Remora. Remora is Triton's uh, fast rescue boat. Let's get the infinite electricity off. That means I have to start Triton up properly. I'm gonna send Triton off and go meet up with Remora. We'll add a little bit of wind so I get a little bit of chop. All right, you go up, you go up two. Right. Yay, no more blasting white lights. That was driving me absolutely insane. I need to work on the drive system a little bit so that it's a little bit more instantaneous. 
I do like having a little bit of inertia in there. Alright, we're clear of the dock here. We can desync them out. Like, I try to set most of my stuff up so that it is, um... I forget what I was even going to say. Uh, this needs to be fixed. I have a couple things I'm going to put on my list. So, for example, this... Uh, so, like, I'm at full rudder now. I'm going to hold down D and keep it going. And now if I hold down the left, it has a lag because that is... Um, instead of using an up-down counter, I have it um, set to normal. And so the problem is it goes all the way to 1, and then I have to wait for it to come back to 1. So I need to fix that. I'll put that on my list. So rudder... Uh, rudder and thrust, so put that on my Triton list. Let's see, engineering. Rudder. Okay. So we're just going to let this uh, go, and I'm going to... Go get Remora. Uh, I need to set it up for Remora first. It's kind of tough. Oh, come on, man. Stay on Triton, please. Uh, it's kind of tough to set up perfectly for Remora if you didn't launch Remora. It's like Remora's attachment system. It needs to be left at the right height so that Remora can uh, come back and attach. So it's not a big deal if you have it on here ready and then you... Uh, when you disconnect, you just leave it in its position, and then uh, it can be reattached pretty easily. I think that should be pretty good there. Let's hope. I can always uh, go from vessel to vessel to fix it up, but I want to see if Remora needs anything. It's a tight space, so I really can't do too much to decorate Remora and kind of make Remora a little bit like, it looks pretty bland because it doesn't have any sort of top. But it, uh, let's see what we have here. Uh, light bar, so the light bar pops up, theoretically, if I can power this. Um, let's see. I need to do the breaker on the side, I think, here. Nope, that's battery backup. Where's the regular breaker? Come on. Being annoying. What the hell is the regular breaker? Oh, it's master here, okay. And then two is light bar. So there's there's the light bar goes up. So like Remora is nice and fast, and so Remora can go do Remora is like the long distance rescue. Like I did last career build series, I went from, I left Triton over here and I went all the way down here, did a rescue, went all the way up the river and delivered the people to Holt Town uh, with Remora. So Remora is like a long range. You see we're doing almost 70 knots here. So, you know, it's fast. It has pretty basic nav. Let's see, what did I put on there? Maybe I did put some more uh, intricate nav on there. I'm not sure, but reasonably, basic nav on there. So the attachment system is kind of cool. Uh, in order to keep it stable, it has two uh, connectors. To, so it will swing uh, port starboard, but it will not uh, it will not pitch. And the way it works is so it can't grab the wrong connector because one of the connectors doesn't energize until the other one connects. All right, so we want to match Triton speed. And then, uh, all right, so I'm just going to go like... I'm just trying to match it really quickly here. Do you have a rope on me? I do. Beautiful. Okay. Now, oh, come on. Grab the rope, you scum. There we go. And so I just want to drop off like a knot of speed there. Okay.
This is what I was saying about like you normally you would have this where it needs to be height wise and I can't remember what the height is so there we go all right uh, it needs to come in just a hair so so like when you when you drop this off initially you leave that out so you just leave this out and so it'll automatically be set up where it needs to be for your return essentially Gently start pushing up here. There we go. All right, now we're attached. So, for example, the way this works is until this connector is connected, this one cannot connect. So what would happen normally is this connector it would try to grab this one, and then you'd be misaligned. This one cannot connect until this one connects. So these two here are the are only allowed to connect when um, you know these two will connect first and then this one only is allowed to connect when that one's already connected so that kind of protects you from having a situation where you grab the wrong one all right and so that's good we shut the engines down we go ahead we put the light bar down I don't know man I, I, I dig remora remora works well it's just it looks a little plain Jane to me but then like you know and this is another one that needs to be spawned separately from the from Triton so that it, uh, because this one will actually go more than two kilometers. Once uh, once the new space DLC comes out, they talked about they're going to change the way that works. So we theoretically should be able to spawn all these vehicles together and not have them despawn. Because essentially, like, when you spawn these together, for example, this and that, these are actually part of Triton. And so when part of Triton gets a certain distance away from the main body of Triton, it says, up, oh, you're too far away, despawn it. And that, uh, of course, you know. Am I hooked? Yeah, I must have hooked. Okay, I'm hooked. So then it hooks to that. And so that's Remora. So Remora is the main, that's the big rescue vehicle that can actually do the work. This one's pretty slow. It's still, I think, a little bit faster than Triton, so I can catch up, but... This one's like really bad weather, so like here, let's bang in some some waves. And then you'd want to be stopped for this. This thing is about useless. I'd like to make that man overboard boat. That's get, that is one job. It's supposed to be a man overboard boat. It's mostly just RP. It's pretty crap, but um, like to actually make a useful man overboard boat. I also have three boats on there, so like you would stop to use the lifeboat. And the lifeboat is kind of all weather, so it can roll. It it can't uh, capsize unless you <laughs> unless you let water inside of it. But uh, it can't really capsize, so it that protects you. How does that? Oh, I you know what? I I hooked up the wrong thing. It's supposed to be hooked up to the rope tank. I have a hose on there. Ugh. All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can do this here. That's funny. I hooked up the hose. It needs to be hooked up to the um, to the rope anchor. All right. <laughs> that would be why. I was like, why is this falling funny? This was tested. All right, so like the lifeboat theoretically can't sink, and it's it, um, kind of all weather. You have to be careful, though. It will auto-pump the bilge, I believe, if memory serves. Let's cut the wind down a little bit. It's um, the waves are fine. It's the wind gets to the point where it starts blowing the sh the boats around, and I can't really control what I'm doing here. So, eventually, I'll get in my seat here. I'm trying not to drown though when I'm doing it. I think we're gonna we're <laughs> losing battle here in the not drowning game here. I can't open that hatch until it stops. I'm going to just kill the wind for a second and get in there. Because what I would do is the hose screwed me up because if it's attached by the rope, it will sit right here, and then I can board it while it's still attached. And then when I'm ready to detach, that's I pull the rope, and then I jump in. So it kind of screwed me all up here. But um, actually be a good test, see if we can get a rescue done here. 
close that. All right. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get moving here, and then we'll uh, I'll go ahead and uh, turn the wind up. One hundred percent wind is pretty useless. Go to like seventy. Everything. So this like this is missing some stability systems. Some of my other things need. This is old. This needs some work apparently. We'll cut the thrust down a little bit. Try to get this not to be crazy, crazy pants. Yeah, this this stability system needs work. So. Could use a new lifeboat at some point or an updated lifeboat, but that's kind of its job is this thing's to go out there. The problem is, as you can see, I'm bobbing up and in the water constantly, so it makes it like, how am I getting out of this? So let's see if I can even make this work with like 50% wind. All right. And so it should have, so it has a big capacity or it holds eight. And then I should have a bilge pump. I think that's bilge in the back. Yeah, so you would open this hatch. I think this is an auto hatch. And if it, yep, see it auto closed. So it's currently pumping out. So you would go, you'd rescue your people. You would wait until it stops bobbing like a maniac. And you would go in with the person. See, it's going to auto close. And you just keep trying to get in there. Wait for the bob. Oh, come on, let me in, let me in, let me in. <laughs> it's going to be a pain. Right. It's empty now. I need to wait for the right cycle to get it. The problem is it knocks me out of my ass, and then I can't get in there. So you can see it's have, it has some issues it needs resolved, but um, mainly it's, there's no way I can get in there because it's going to auto op it's gonna auto close every time it gets water in there, and it knocks me on my ass every time you go up a wave. So it's like, there we go. Right. And... Now it's auto closed. All right, so it's auto closed and it's gonna pump itself out. So, like, say you got one of your people in there, and then you could go back to Triton. So it definitely needs some stability work, as you can see. It's nuts. It's I don't think it has my most recent like kind of methodology for stability, so I kind of need to fix that. That's kind of its job is to do that. And so, like, it would stay close to Triton like this. You'd pull Triton right up along the rescue and go do this. But just another tool. Yeah, eventually I'll get that uh, VTOL cargo plane. That that gets a lot of attention, that one. People seem to like that. It's um, it's just it's very complicated. So I have to, like, I I've, I've, I think that chickadee system is the key to me fixing what I need to fix. The other issue is that... Um, I screwed something up, and that's why I stepped away from it, was I screwed it up, and my mind reverse. I screwed something up, and now I need to fix it, so. But this is like, this is a bobby pain in the ass, this one here, so. I don't know why it's bobbing so deep in the water, that's the thing, is I wonder how bad, the CG must be really aft, it must have a very aft CG. And that front must uh, be very light. What is oh, okay? The rope, the uh, hose is on the deck. I'm like, what's on the gr in the water there? So like, this thing's gonna be a nightmare to try to reconnect. Oh, 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 don't hit! Don't slam! Don't slam, Triton, please. We'll see if we can get reattached here. So it's always nice to kind of come back and improve some of these things. I always like to go back and do an improvement pass. All right, so we need to go in reverse now. Right, let's see if I can get out of this on a swell here. The 
It's iffy because it's bouncing me around like crazy. And it wants to pump out, so I'm going to get out for a second. I want to see if I can even hook this back up. We're past 40 meters now, so I'm not going to be able to do it. But So that could use a pass. That's not great right now, that lifeboat. That could use some love. I think Remora is fine. Like here, let's play with Remora in this weather. We're going to end up probably banging into our lifeboat on the way out, but... I don't even see it somewhere down here. Yeah, there it is. Bye. <laughs> All right, so we'll go like, here's 13 knots. We'd want to go into the swells. I've landed on Triton in like 100% wind before with Katie did. I have a video on that. It was pretty hairy. So I'll work on a couple of those things, the steering, and I might look at the um, thrust as well. I think I've got all the microcontrollers hidden at this point. All right, so Remora, we'll play with Remora coming out. Yeah, I could show you that again. So essentially what's happening is, um, I'm trying to think of this. I'll, I'll show you exactly how it's doing it with, with it. That's going to be the best way to do it. So like this is, so this is how you like, because we're going to launch this, this is going to stay in the correct position. So like if that is where I want it, which it is, I'm going to go check it, make sure this is in the water. It is. Okay, I'm not pushing in the water all that much. Okay, good. So that is the position. So this will stay in its position. You know, so when I disconnect, it will already be in the correct. It's probably a little bit on the low end. Let's go up just a hair. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a rope. Don't need to do this step, but I kind of, this is a step I try to do. Okay, it's set to two. That's why. Set to 40, okay. Grab the rope anchor here. Theoretically, if I can get close enough to it to do it. There we go. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Ah, you suck. You suck something fierce, I'm telling you that. Heavy seas are definitely dangerous. I had it set to two meters, so it wasn't going to let me do this from the... But you're supposed to do it from here. So, you're supposed to do it from here like... Uh, I didn't mean to do the side one. I have to do this one. All right, center one like that. All right, so now that's roped up. Don't really need it roped up. We'll, we'll get rid of the rope for now. This is probably going to be too rough a seas to rope it. But you would then jump in and grab the helm. Okay. Master power, engine's on, we'll put the light bar up. And then you would, uh, so we're started, and then we just press that, and it disconnects. It's going to auto-reset, so after uh, like 30 seconds or less, it will automatically then reconnect. So we can just go right up and reconnect. I pretty much do that on all my connection systems. That way, you know, it's like I don't have to go back up and hit that button again, because that would be a pain. Ooh, that was a... 100% wind, everything just wants to take off, so it's it's why it's pretty useless, 100% wind. Just goes into, you know, it'd be better if, like, over, like, 70% wind, it just increased wave height and didn't increase the actual velocity of the wind after that. Because, like, it's, the wind is really weathering me badly like this. And then so we want to cozy up against Triton like that, and we're attached. So not too bad. That's pretty easy, as you can see. Like, even in this weather, which are we at 100? Now we're at 50. So even at this, it's, um, you know, it's still pretty easy. And you notice, like, even in rough seas like this, we're, like, we're sideways to the wind. And we can still operate Remora in this. I just need to wait for a, a swell to uh, get off. 
Oh, light bar. And engines. Alright, let's shut off the engines. Let's go ahead and put the light bar down. So yeah, so this is, uh, you know, Remora is pretty much all weather. You know, then it gets really bad. I can always use some of my air vehicles to get things on. But that's kind of... You know, that attachment system works really, really well. And having the reset on there is really nice because it... I can show you guys how the reset works. But I do that on, like, the fifth wheels. Like, in real life, when you disconnect from a tractor trailer, you pull the handle. And as soon as you pull off, it resets it for reconnection. So then you just back into the next trailer. You know, you don't have to go out there and, you know, unless the handle's broken, you uh, don't have to do it. Then it attaches the hard point and we're connected. And this, I think, believe, also recharges electricity, so. But yeah, so you can see how Remora is, like, it really wasn't that hard to attach. I just kind of matched the speed and then I got up against Triton and then it will, like, you know, it, it, uh, it helps you align pretty well. And then... Uh, theoretically, I can refuel this. I think this is plumbed in. Yeah, that's not my heading indicator. I'll see uh, who that's by. Yeah, that's the other thing, too, is, um, you know, uh, Dave makes a good point, is, you know, IRL, you know, if you get weather conditions bad enough, you're not going. You know, and that's where a lot of people, you know, like, I, I see a lot of new players, they're like, how, how am I ever expected to play this game? The weather is so bad, there's no way I can play this game. Don't do the rescue. Nobody said you had to do the rescue in terrible weather. You know, it, you know, and you tell them, like, just skip the mission. Or wait until the weather's better. Or sleep in a bed until the better weather gets better. Oh, I can do that? Yeah. You don't have to do the mission. Just wait. <laughs> All right, we got a couple of questions about Triton here. So I'll show the reset system. Resets are pretty simple. Like I'll show the, uh, this connector works really well. So let me find it. Where the hell are we here? Uh, up here. Okay. So like right here, where is that? Oh, I put it way over here, didn't I? Where the hell is it? Why is it over here? Uh, probably because that's all the space I had. So this is uh, Crane Control, Rescue Boat Davit, Davit Starboard. Where is the one I need? Is that it there? Hardpoint Connector Launch, that's it. What's that up there? That's got to be it. That's it, okay. So like this is pretty simple here. It's... um. The sliders, pivot, let's see. So here is the here's the button to release it. So essentially what you do is you push it. It does an up-down counter, which will go to zero or one. So it counts by one, it will either go zero or one or it's two positions. So you essentially turn it into a two position switch. And then you go, uh, let's see, it will read. So when it is uh, one, it will uh, release the connector. When it releases the connector, it goes up and it triggers a timer that counts 30 seconds. As soon as that counts 30 seconds, it pulses and it re and it counts it back down to zero. So what you're doing is when you press the button, it says, hey, I'm one now. When it says one, it releases the connector. After 30 seconds, it clicks it back down to zero and it's primed to reconnect reconnect after 30 seconds. So that way, you don't have to worry about hitting the button. You don't have to do any of that stuff. It's just ready. And then the connectors here is uh, you have connector one. And if connector one is not attached or it's in the one position, release connector two. So if connector one is not attached, connector two is released. And so only connector one can attach. And that's how it makes it so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't grab the wrong connector. It only grabs connector one. And then once connector one is grabbed, connector two is now allowed to grab. And that way you always uh, get the right connectors. So, yeah, let me find out who that scrolling heading indicator is. I think it's on my Steam, so I'll bring it up here. Let's see, I have to I have to get rid of some uh, some subscriptions. I like saying subscribe to some of you guys' builds from the uh, build challenge and stuff. But as you can imagine, it gets quite busy having all those in there. So let's see. Yeah, see, like I have a bunch of the 
these subscribe still and it's just I can't find any of my own stuff when I go through there. So. Here it is right here, compass display. This is by uh, Jackie1379. So I might build one of my own at some point, but uh, you know, that's what I, one thing I kind of do is I'll use other people's stuff. And then if that's the one I like, if I like it, if there's certain things I want to change, then I can go back and build my own. So that works pretty well. That's uh, here. I'll put a link in for, for that. But that works well. It's a nice system, and eventually I'll make my own. Part of it too is, you know, it's it's um, you know, imitation is the best flattery. You know, it's like when I see a system I like, that's when I want to build that system, and it's a good way to learn because it's like, it's tough, especially like stuff like Lua or, or really anything. If you're not interested in it, it's a pain to try to learn how to do it. But if you're interested in something, it makes it fun and it makes it rewarding to build something you want. So it's like if I see something like this that I want. You know, this would be a good Lua project to go in there and learn how this was done and then make your own version of it because it's actually something you want and need instead of just, you know, building something that, um, you know, building something you're not interested in. It's like some of those, like, programming, uh, you know, uh, some of those, like, little programming tasks that, like, some of the software does if you're trying to learn some software. And it's like, you're like, why am I doing this? I don't want to do this. You know, there's no, this doesn't apply to me in real life. And when you kind of make it something fun, it's like, <laughs> my grades greatly improved when I went to, uh, when I went to learn how to fly, you know, because it was like, I was actually interested in it. Seat data. Let's see, seat data goes there. Engine controller. I'm trying to find rudder controls here. So my rudders are just wing segments on pivots. So your best big rudders. All right, let's find it. Uh, where are you at there, guy? You are way the hell up there. Somewhere up there. Okay. We'll find in a second here. Where are you? Out to rudders. Here it is. Okay. All right, so where am I? Wow, this is a... Messy panel. Gross. Now, rudder position out to rudders. Okay. What's that? All right, so that's the actual. Wow, this is a mess. There's an old, old, some old stuff in it. All right, AD. What is it doing? Okay, I did this. So this, uh, I had to do this because, for example, my rudder is sticky. And so my AD is sticky, so I don't want it to, I don't want it to, like normally I just add my own rudder input so I can override and steer it. But the problem is, since it's sticky, if I left in 10% 10, 10 rudder and then the autopilot came on, it would be adding 10% rudder to it and then it would be all screwed up. So that's fine. Keep that like that. The difference here is the AD here then comes in and it's clamped. And so what I want to do is change this out a little bit and so what I want to do is do an up down counter and I want to go here with the up down counter and so what we'll do is we'll do AD and we'll do threshold one negative one all right, and then we'll go like so. And now we'll limit this to, do I have 45? Should be 0. 
I think I did some testing and 45 worked better on this than 50. So we'll keep it there. I'm happy with the way it works. So. All right, so now that should help with this. You know what we'll do? We'll add this on. And, um, okay, I know what I want to do here. So what's this? What are you? I don't know what all this crap is here. What the hell is all this? This looks like... Interesting. So this is my actual yaw control down here. That's my actual yaw control. Let's see what the hell this is all about, though. 11 is AP on. Wow, I don't know what the hell is going on here. It's weird. Oh, you know what it is? It's uh, autopilot and heading hold. Heading hold takes precedence. That's what it is. Okay, so one of these, this is heading hold down here. This is autopilot right here. This is heading hold. That's what it is. Okay. And so if I put in a heading hold, heading hold takes precedence at all times. So in an emergency, I can change the heading so say i ac accidentally put the autopilot to drive us right through a an, an island i can quickly go over to the heading hold and i can quickly put in 090 and turn us hard right and the heading hold will always take precedence so that makes sense that's why they're switch boxes so we're good there all right so that's fine the hierarchy is fine we'll keep that the way it is this fixes some of my issues there though okay Alright, so that's good. I don't think... Do I have a heading hold in there? I do. I don't know if it's plugged in though. Okay, good. That works now. Let's see. Do I have a heading hold plugged in? Where is heading hold? Heading hold number. Okay, that's what this is. So I need to label this. I, I keep forgetting what this is, so I've been touching it. Heading hold. Okay. There's heading hold right there. Alright, good. So that's uh, done. And then up, oh, I screwed something up. Oh, come on. Takes a while for Triton to come in, so I have to fix it. I need to configure the seat. All right, so AD is going to be um, reset 100% now. And then I need to double check, make sure I have these. Uh... Nope, that those should work. Okay, good. I have like a, it looks like hydraulic rudders. They're faked. I didn't know. They should work fine the way they are. All right, so now. So when I go hard over on the rudder. All right, so I'm going to hold D. So I'm still holding D. So before it would go all the way to one and then it would have a lag coming back. I'd have to count all the way from one to, you know, uh, 55 0.55 more and now I'm going to switch to D right now D or A rather and what's it doing so something's broken now is that trimming no let me look at it. I gotta look at it again something screwed up I screwed something up there that's a light tower where's AP where is AP I think right there what did I screw up here? So AD, decrease is negative one. Okay. Negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, bingo, bango, bongo. Wait, there's a one, enable 45. That's why, it's 0.45, not, not 45. It was, it was trying to count all the way up to 45s. <laughs> <laughs> it was way gone. All right, that would be it. That would be what's grit screwed up. Okay. All right, so now when I go all the way to the right, I don't know if I like the speed. I kind of like it a little bit slower like this. Like right now, Triton is too zippy. All right, so I'm holding D, and now when I let go of D and press A, you see it comes right back, so it's more responsive now. 
And I like having the slow rudder because in real life, you know, this thing is so huge, it would be slow and you don't want the ship moving too nimbly. All right, I'm going to try to screw with my thrust, my throttles. My throat, yeah, I guess. I'm trying to think of the right terminology. Thrust is probably better. All right, so let's find the thrust. So I'll be in the engine controllers here. I'm trying to think of a way to bridge this delay. That I kind of like the delay a little bit. It gives me momentum. You know, I want this big ship to have momentum. Let me read, check up on chat. Starting to get in the cool weather. I can actually wear a sweatshirt. It's nice. Uh, let's see. Check up on chat. I'll try not to get distracted. Yeah, let me quickly, Daniel's asking about something. Let me quickly uh, update this, save this. I want to show you the, uh, I'll show you Chickadee again. So the way I have Chickadee working, which is the new way, is, uh, so I can show you a bunch of it. But uh, so anyways, um, up down is my throttle. It's reset 100%, so. That's my throttle is reset 100%. So it will be throttle slash collective. All right. And so that's my throttle collective. And then if we go back in here to the, uh, where is autopilot? Right there. So uh, we'll go to engine first. Eventually. All right. Here it is. So here's the engine, and so for the engine controller, it's simple. It's uh, channel four. If it's one, it counts up. The RPS two counts down. Uh, if the rotor position is greater than 0 0.2, it will limit the. It will bring us back to uh, idle, and so idle is 10 RPS. It's not really 10 RPS. Um, I I use an artificially low p value, and I use an artificially high RPS number. That way it's smooth and it still gives me the RPS values I want. So that will cap me. I think my propellers are at a nine to one. So around six, six or no, they're not nine to ones. They're small than nine to ones. I forget what they are, but that gives me, I think I can go up to about an eight. Eight RPS gives me 60 RPS on the rotors. I don't want to go higher than 60. So when I, when my rotors start tilting up and I go into vertical mode, um, it's, it will limit the RPS to to that so essentially eight rps is what i'm getting and that will prevent the rotors from going over 60 and having problems and then what i do is i go into the autopilot and so now it's a pain because the collective you know the way the collective normally works is it's a reset and so you push the collective up and it will slowly start to change the blades back to zero so it's nice and smooth. You go up smooth, you gently slow down, you go down smooth, you gently stop the, the descent. And so I mimic that by coming in here and I take channel four, which is up down again. I go to a uh, threshold of one. So when I press the up arrow, it's gonna go into this counter. I have it set at 0.01 and it's gonna count uh, minimum of negative one, maximum of one. So when I press to go up on the collective, it's going to count up to a value of potentially one. When I go to zero, which is neutral, it's going to press the down arrow. All right. And then also when I go to zero, it's going to press the up arrow on the down counter. So what this is going to do here is cancel it. It's canceling each other out. So when I press zero, it goes Okay, count me up and count me down. Count me up, count me down. Count me up, count me it down. And then it adds the two together. You see, that's just simple addition here. So because it's adding these two together, when I go to zero, it leaves it where I had it, essentially. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to cancel it out. And so what this allows me to do is if I want to go up, I press one. This is going to start to count up. And it will give me, say, a value of one. And then when I let go, it's going to give me both down and up at the same time, which is going to keep me at one. And then when I press the down arrow, 
it's going to just count me back down. Then when I let go, it's going to go zero and it's going to cancel it out. So it will stay where I put it. So that way it acts very much like um, it would normally. So uh, that's that's how I do that system. And that allows me to use the, the up down arrows for both throttle of the engines and also for collective. So that way I don't have to change it over something weird. So hopefully that makes sense. Ooh. Get the yawns. All right. So let's update that. Let's save the chickadee. I've made some changes here. Oh, don't do that. He's done. Save. Chickadee. That's so many builds I'm working on. It's hard to keep track of everything. Really. All right. So that, um, I'm trying to think of how I can work on Triton's throttles. The benefit is Triton's throttles are when I get in a dead zone with Triton's throttles. And there are pluses and minuses with this dead zone. The negative is it's a dead zone, so for for me to go from forward to back, it takes a second for it to work. The benefit of that is IRL in a real ship, it would take a second to get the ship to slow down. And so I kind of like having momentum, so we'll leave it for now. It's kind of a built-in momentum system where it you know it takes it a while to slow down. So we'll leave that in for now. I might want to refine that later. How, okay, let me, uh, I'm trying to read uh, in order here. How do you move in microcontroller editor? Uh, so let's click on one. I, I couldn't remember off the top of my head, I have to do it. So you, um, I do middle mouse button, hold the middle mouse button, so you zoom out, hold the middle mouse button. Like that. Middle mouse button. Yep. Scroll wheel, middle mouse button, pretty much. I can't imagine not being able to move around in there. <laughs> oh, I got some cities from Citrus. Very nice. He's uh, he's actually over in his cat tower. He, uh, he was very suspicious when I built that, but he's been laying in, on it, and he's been enjoying it. Is the tug you made for the start of the career build series? No, it isn't. That's everything needs work. That needs work. A lot of stuff doesn't get released because it's just not finished. Have you seen this air show? Yeah, I've, I've thought about potentially entering something. I have I have a bunch of stuff. I need to find a gap in time because you know I I have the review channel which uh, just concluded. Um. You know, everybody, if you uh, if your build didn't get picked for a review, um, when I open submissions again, just resubmit them. You know, so uh, there are some good builds in there that I want to review that did not um, did not get to it. So just uh, go ahead and uh, resubmit uh, when that opens up again. But uh, so I have like that to do. That will take me a, a while, not a while necessarily. That one probably take me. That will take a day's worth to get that done. And then the challenge is due, what, the 28th now? Yeah, let me look at the challenge. Build challenge. So I extended the ch uh, build challenge to 28th. Again, if, if you need time on these things, ask. You know, I had like uh, four or five people ask for more time, and so I gave more time. If it was one person, it's unlikely I'm going to do more time. So, like, I, I put right in there, I'm like, I need a consensus. So once, you know, like... A few people were like, yeah, we need more time. I'm happy to extend the time. So that is now the 28th. Uh, that's due. So then, um, what's that, a Friday? That's got to be a Thursday. I think I made it a Thursday. So Friday, I could try to get the video done. And then Saturday, I could have the video out. And so that is there. And then, um, you know, so that starts getting me a little bit less busy to uh, potentially work on something for the uh, air show. So, what is this? What, what, what is I doing in here? What was I doing in here? Where am I? Oh, okay, that was just showing you how to get around in there. All right. So, let's see. Yeah, so let's look at a couple builds, see if uh, what I could even put up or what I'd even be happy to put up for static displays if I was going to do it. I, I had some interest in it. I'm just trying to think what I want to put on there. I could do Night Owl. Night Owl could go on there. Try to see what the state of Night Owl is. 
That all's pretty, pretty complete. So I could see Night Owl as a static display, it wouldn't be bad. The interior is a little bit, needs some work and is a little bit bland. A little bit on the bland side inside, so I don't know if I'd want to put that forward for that. Uh, I think Albatross is probably better as a static display. Keep hitting exit instead of spawn. You know, its coloration is supposed to be on the military end, so it's a little bit bland exterior-wise. Proteus was one I was thinking, potentially. Proteus could go. Proteus is kind of a crowd pleaser for... That would be a good stack. Like, this has a better interior. This is what I need to do to Night Owl's interior, so that needs to happen at some point to get some ribbing in there. But, like, this needs to be a little bit finished in here. So that's potential. Proteus is probably, like, if I was going to do one, I'd probably do Proteus. I'm not a huge fan of Proteus's tail. Needs some work back there. But that's the only part of Proteus. The hips are a little bit on the large side, but they're proportional. So Proteus could be a cool one because it has the lifting nose. And the hips are part of the is uh, part of how you get into the to Proteus. So I don't have I don't have any um I might have put on the rocket glitch. I can't remember in here. Part of Pro reason Proteus hips are so big too is like this has watertight doors in it. So I need watertight walk-in doors on there. The nice thing with Proteus for having the um where the hell's the door? Then between the nose door and the crane, I think are kind of cool items on Proteus, but I'd have to find a way to get all this set up for the static display. So I'd have to have the crane, I'd have to re-engineer the crane to be sticking out already. And But like this can haul containers into itself. Could also haul vehicles. Like I have, I have a helicopter that fits in here. That was something cool I did last career build series. Was have a helicopter that um, that can uh, be loaded in here. Uh, where are we at here? Nope. There's boom out. Okay. Whatever I just hit, I meant not to hit. Like this crane uh, allows you to load containers and also vehicles. So, oh. okay, that that's meant to do that. All right. Is it? Maybe not. I can't remember. I haven't used this thing in a while. Crane down. Okay, crane down. Just put the crane down like so. Been a while since I used... It would be cool to get Proteus back in here. Proteus is another... Um... Proteus is designed to bring two containers up to the Arctic, but once you're up there, like, I can't, I can't do anything at BVG. So they have to go to uh, Tajan, and then they have to be flown by a separate vehicle out. So, like, this will haul... Vehicles in, so like you can see, this kind of cool vehicle for a um, static display. There's a lot of of leveling on this one. This one has you can walk around in there. What is that okay? This is the uh, service panel here. Supplies. This used to have an elevator, but it, it uh, caused glitching problems. Like this has the uh, observation and the and the tail. It'd be kind of cool to get this back in there. Like this has the upper deck. It's bathroom, sleeping quarters, bar, skylights. So like this is kind of a this could be cool as a static display. This has a closet in there. 
Yeah. Proteus is a complicated. <laughs> Proteus is a complex bird. But yeah, so I could see Proteus as being uh, potential for that. Cap Air Jet would be a good one. Especially seeing it's branded. Cap Air Jet would be a contender there for that. I forgot Cap Air Jet has the... Um, Cap Air Jet has a uh, tail stairs. I love tail stairs. I used to love the tri jets were always my favorite, and a big part of it was the tail stairs. Lav. Drink cart. Yeah, just get back in cap air a little bit. Wasn't getting that many views. So I have to kind of be feeling it. The jump seats. When people say I have the worst seat in the airplane, no, you do not. The jump seat is the worst <laughs> seat in the airplane. Depends on the plane. Though, like a seven, triple uh, seven has like full size jump seats in the in the back. So, uh, stall airplane. Maybe I don't know. All our planes a little bit bland on the inside. That could use some of that texturing like Albatross. What is this wide? One, two, three, four, five. This one might be able to fit that car in there. Let me test it. I don't think I don't know if I fit that Jeep in there. Let's try that really quick. The donkey. This one might be too tall, I'm not sure. Because that's what this 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 whole point of this car was to um, to fit in some of these builds. So they needed a car to be able to fit in some of these builds here, so I probably can't get this door open, but I might just be able to get this door open. Yeah, I can get the door open. Okay. Yeah, so like that could that could travel. So that would be Excuse me there. Jeep. <laughs> really should probably attach you to the ground, but Any ground power battery AB gems off. What is that? Oh, crossfeed. Okay, that's crossfeed. Do I have an APU on this? I don't know if I have an APU on this. Probably not. Uh, fuel cut off. binoculars and all that nonsense. Yeah, I forgot where I put yeah, parking brakes on the on the captain's side. Yeah, so there's a, I have a bunch of planes. I don't know if uh, I'd say, you know, Prote's probably has the coolest features that would make a static display interesting, you know. It has my emblem on the tail. Big, you know, lot to walk around. Not thrilled with the way the tail came out. Oh, there's my flappage here. Flappage. The donkey. Apple lights on? I did not. Okay. Yeah, a lot of my vehicles too. It, I tend to work on the 
the mechanics of it more. So it's like things like constant speed propellers and the autopilots and stuff like that too. So it's like a static display. Doesn't necessarily show everything off, but it's not the end of the world too. It doesn't necessarily need to. I have my little truck in there. Yeah, I'm trying to think what else would be good for that. Let me read some chat here as we're going back. Get rid of that marker. It's going to annoy me. There we go. I'm trying to land here. So this plane, it, um, yeah, it's, it's a stall plane. It's a lot of flap on this. So you see, I can get it down to like 80, around 80 knots. And so like, I put anti-flaps on everything so they actually behave properly. I, I find it interesting sometimes you'll see people criticize the aerodynamics in game and like they have no experience in aerodynamics at all. And I'm like, you know, not, not perfect, but like a lot of it is again, you know, you can build a system and make it work. Like this works realistically, like the deck angle's perfect, like realistic flaps and everything else, you know, it's just, um, I think a lot of people overestimate their own knowledge in some of these things. You know, that's, that's what my degree is in, you know, it's got a lot of flight experience, it's, uh, and it seems perfectly fine to me, the uh, aerodynamics in game. Do things glide as much as they would in real life? Yes, but I think a lot of people also think things glide a lot more than they do. You know, when you fly an airplane like this, when you fly, especially uh, like a, a commercial you know, uh, airliner, you keep power on all the way to the ground. You don't chop power like you do in a Cessna 172. You know, I think some people are thinking that's what you do. You just chop the power. You don't. You know, you keep the power on. You know, you can pull the power all the way back in a jet, and yeah, you'll get better. You know, you're not really you're not gliding. The engines still have static thrust at idle. You know, so that's something people aren't understanding. Like if you have a like we did we did simulator stuff with dual engine failures. It drops like a friggin' stone, you know. It does it does glide, but it drops like a stone, you know. And and some people think that it's super duper, uh, you know. Your glide ratios are huge. Let's find some glide ratios here. So it's because I keep seeing like the grouchy contingent will say things like that. And it's like I'm like, what? Are, what? You know, show me that you know anything about aerodynamics. Uh, let's see. C one seventy two glide ratio. All right, nine to one. So that means for every um, nine nine units forward, you you lose um, one unit of altitude. So, um, so you'd say if you're at a thousand feet, you can go nine thousand feet forward. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll bring the, the paint. Uh, let's do, I can't stand that brightness, so we'll go. All right. So let's say you have, um, try to get some reasonable lines in here. Black that out. That's fine. 85 is excessive. Yeah. So there's your X. There's your Y. All right, so let's say you're at 9,000 feet. So let's put some ticks in here. Uh, let's see, where am I at? I should have here. Let's uh, get these lines better here. So we'll say I'm going to put the line at 14. So we'll put it just south of 14 so that it caps out around 14. Okay. And then we'll go at zero. We'll do the other line. So X, Y is in there. Okay. And then so we'll say one is... Let's grab this. We'll do 40. So we'll say each one of these main ticks is a 1. So there's 1, 2, 3. I covered that so I can't see it. I'm 
move them as necessary. There's four. Five, they're gonna be a little wonky. But um, I'm starting to line them up better here. I'm not gonna go redo them, but six. I'm lining them up on each of these big ticks here. So let's just do it from there. And then we'll do big ticks on this one. So this is gonna be one. Can't see the bottom ones, that's fine. I'll be able to tell. I'll be able to tell off these. These are actually numbered one through, so we don't need the bottoms. All right, so let's say you're at uh, 6,000 feet in a Cessna 172, all right? So it's a nine to one. So for every nine units, you're going to go forward. So if you're at 6,000 feet, you're going to be able to go um, six times nine. So is that, is that right? That should be right, yeah. So uh, you're going to be able to go 54,000 feet forward. So I'm not going to be able to do it on this chart. But uh, so you're going to be able to go 54,000 feet forward. So if you did, so that's almost right. So you do 54,000 divided by 5,264. That means you can do 10 miles at six. No way in hell. I'm trying to think. That doesn't seem right to me. 6,000 for 10 miles. Theoretically. That's got to be best case scenario. That, that sounds iffy to me. Because they're, they're like a small plane's ultra draggy. Let's find a, so that's a 9 to 1. Yeah. So let's see. Um, let's see like an ERJ 145 glide ratio. Probably better to do it in like Excel with a graph. All right, so like here, um, this is talking about Cessna Citation 550. Uh, they're not gonna have, they're not gonna have glide ratios that I could probably find here. Let's see. I can't remember what it is. They're pretty high. They're, these types of jets are very slippery. Um, let's see if I can find. They don't like to publish this either. So we'll go off of this. We'll go off of this one here. So this one, um, this one's talking like a 12 to a 14 for a, for a, like a large jet. So that is, so like if you are at 30,000 feet and that was, let's say it's 12. So it'll be 30,000 30, times 12. You're talking, you can do 360,000 feet forward divided by 5264. Uh, so you're going to be able to do 68 miles. So that is, that's true in a jet. You'd be able to go about 68 miles in a jet. Um, you know, and you get a lower, you get a lower uh, rating for smaller aircraft because they're very draggy. You know, the jets are much more streamlined. But, you know, you do have gliding, but it's not its not like a lot of people think it is. Like, I've done twin-engine failures, and we did it on takeoff, so we didn't have a lot of altitude. But we went up. We got up to, like, 2,000 feet. They killed both engines. We circled back around and just, just made it back to the runway. You know, so that's usually what's happened at low altitude. High altitude, you can do it. But, like, some of these people are flying around at 500 feet and think they can glide a long distance. So, like... You know, if you're talking Cessna 172 and you're at 500 feet, so we can actually do it here. So let's do 1,000 feet. So you would go 9,000 feet. So where is it? 10, 11, there's 9. It's 900. No, that's, I'm doing 1,000 units. So that will be right here. So if you had a Cessna and you're at 1,000 feet, you're going to be able to go to, you're going to be able to glide like this. This so that is IRL your glide ratio right there for a Cessna 172. So it, it is better than game, but it's not it's not extravagant, you know. That's 9,000 feet. That's about two miles, you know. So it's not extravagant. The game is probably the game is quite a bit less. The game is probably more like that. But our distances are also pretty short in game. So I think you know people make a big deal about you know. You know, oh, I lost both engines and I can't glide. Well, it's like, yeah. 
but you can also do the rocket fin glitch if you want to glide. So there usually is a way in game you can do what you want to do. You can do the rocket fin glitch, put a negative uh, number on there, and then you can essentially um, give your aircraft some more glide. I'm just checking some chat. No, TriStar is cool, yep. Yeah. Let me check some, uh, see some more chat here. I have no clue. It's not my air show, CG. Go look on... I'll pin it somewhere so people can find it. Citrus, do you know where... Oh, there it is, right here. Okay. Here, I'm going to pin it. It's pinned in general. The hell's the pin? Go check the pins in general, CG. Uh, I could lock the Jeep in with ropes. It's built for that. I just didn't do it. You know, it has um, it has one winch there. I don't think I put rope anchors on here. The rest of them have rope anchors on them for locking it in, and it has uh, it has points on it for locking it in. Let me check some more chant. Yep. I think I'll, I'll join it right now. Yes, yeah, so let's see what else they have for planes. That you know, I don't know if I want to work on it to do it, but um... a lot of my stuff's not really in a finished state or all that fancy to look at. Let's see. I don't like the paint on the. Um... On uh, Anton F2. Anton F2 would be a good one, I think, for static display. I can see the Ant 2 being static display. That'd be a good one. Because, you know, if I'm going to build an area around it for, like, you know, the static display, kind of need to have it. Um... Yeah. I can see this going on a static display. Has a couple doors you can walk in and kind of look around, you know, in and out. I think the paint came out nicely. I see Ant 2 is being in there. That'll probably be my leading contender now. Because it's a bunch of work to get it ready for the static display because they want a bunch of crap ripped out of it. So. So I'd have to go tear some stuff out of it. Seagull. I don't know about the seagull. Where's the door? Yeah, it kind of has that bland interior. I'd need to do interior work on it. Still has some stuff going on with it. Like down here is not finished. It has some detailing down here, but it's like... It has some weirdness areas in it too, like in here. Not really finished there. To see what I would, uh, what happened to my music? Muska, muska, muska. I don't have any sort of vice. Uh, if I had a vice plane, I was going to make a vice plane at some point. 
do the water bomber. Another cap plane. What else I have for planes? Not much that I think is really all that attractive. Of, like stuff like cap at cap air jet is in a more finished state that would look good in a uh, static display. That's part of the thing is a static display kind of has to look right, and I have to be able to rip parts out of it to make it because they have a bunch of rules to try to keep it so that it's not too laggy. You know, so like the water bomber go in there theoretically. Yeah, because it's pretty much cockpit and water tanks in there. And then there is the um, this is the cap air version of it. Seats in there. Most of my stuff, the big, the best parts about them are their flight mechanics. Like I don't make super duper lookers. Prototype could kind of be cool. Fencer, I'm not digging the fencer's paint recently. The fencer's paint's been kind of gross, so I need to I need to work in the fencer's paint. I don't know how great of a this gear is wonky. I need to work in the gear, so that's definitely not something I would want to work put out there. Gear is kind of gross. You've got a complex gear rotation, which makes it a pain to get the gear right. I haven't played with this in a while. This tandem helo. That was. So, like, this thing's whole job was to move containers from um, Cajun to um, BVG. And then this is the helicopter that fits inside of Proteus, the Nat. That, the whole job of this helicopter is to fit inside of Proteus so you can carry a helicopter inside an airplane. I could see the um, Sky Raider going in there. I could, that could do. Sky Raider could go in. Sky Raider uh, looks pretty good here. Yeah, it's got it's got it the folding wings, and I think the camo came out pretty good, and has the missiles hanging off of it, which looks kind of nice. That's good detail. It has the little seating area in the back. That would need to be kind of finished out with some fake dials or something to kind of finish it up. You know, I could see Sky Raider going in. That came out nice. And I think this has some, this has some appeal, some uh, sex appeal to it and looks good. So Sky Raider would be up there too. So like Ant 2 Sky Raider, I could say see being ready enough to do. I wish somebody would make a friggin' plane uh, contest. I don't think see see like this is the old paint job. I like that better. I'm gonna have to I'll probably migrate back to that paint job. You know it'd be cool. Maybe I'll do it at some point. We'll do a touch a truck. If you like, they have the touch of trucks where they you know it's kind of like an air show but for trucks. Let's see what else. Manticore looks kind of neat. Manticore. Manticore could could be a static display. That was for the last Jersey challenge. I couldn't get it done in time, but Manticore was going to be my entry for that.
Cool looking over some of the old builds. Some of the stuff seems old, man. Need some uh, updates and work. Like what else do I have for airplanes this far back? I don't think I have much for airplanes this far back. It took me a while to get to airplanes. I just uh, was enjoying a lot of the sea vehicles, especially. I think that's pretty much it. So maybe, you know, I have a couple there. Like Sky Raider, I think Ant 2 are my top choices because they want you to, like, there's a bunch of things they want pulled out of there. And so it's it's a bunch of work to get it up get it up and running, you know. So I could see doing it, but uh, it would have to be some of those uh, smaller things, you know, to be able to do it. So I would definitely. Ah, get out of there, you devil. So if. That's the distance. That's 70 right there. So we'll take a circle. <laughs> it's a square. All right, let's get a circle here. Make it uh, red and let's make it 10. All right, so that's probably about... So that's a 70 mile. Let's get it right on the money here. Where the hell's the dragger? There it is. So like that is probably about a 70 mile ring. So if you were an airliner at 37,000 feet, that's less than 70 miles. You can glide anywhere in this range. And so if you were in an airliner, you can land, um, you can land at DAB. Um, definitely you can land at DAB. You could probably, you're not gonna make Orlando proper uh simi's there you can make sanford so you could land at the sanford international you could land at uh, new samar is probably too short to land an airliner at um saint augustine you could land but you'd be right on the edge going to saint augustine um but in an emergency you're going to be able to you're going to go where you're going to go um, you could you could go to Ormond, you could go to Flagler, you could go to New Smyrna, you could go to Deland. Um, so, yeah, Ocala, we're not going to make it out there. So, like, you could land in this in this range here. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Probably Orlando Executive eight. You could do eight run airports. You could land at. Um, with that jet, and you have two engines, so the likelihood that you're gonna that you're gonna lose both engines is unlikely. Uh, Titusville, you could land in Titusville. There's nine. You're not gonna make uh, NASA. NASA's right here. NASA's here. Uh, you're gonna actually, yeah. This is this is the shuttle landing facility. They're gonna yell at you. Go <laughs> there. It's better to go to Titusville. Uh, Port Canaveral. You're not gonna make Port Canaveral. That's the shuttle landing facility. I think there. They're gonna yell at you if you go there. But if you declare an emergency, you can do whatever you want. So, you know, you have quite a few places. Like that is, uh, yeah, so that's that's kind of the whole thing with glide distance and why it's, um, you don't necessarily need an insane amount of glide distance to get places because, uh, you know, that's a lot of airports. That's nine good airports in that range. And so, like, if you were in a Cessna, what do we say, 9 to 1, let's say you're at... Let's say you're at a reasonably high altitude with a Cessna 6,000 uh, times 9. That's 54,000 divided by 54,000 uh, divided by 5264. That's uh, 10. That's 10 nautical miles. So you're talking, uh, if this is 60, it's one-sixth of that. So let's say uh, you probably get up to Flagler. So now if we drew a circle here, Let's say that's about uh, a little bit more, we'll say. I think Flagler's a, uh, Flagler might be a little bit further than 10 miles. But now you can land at Ormond. 
You can barely make Flagler. You can probably barely make the land. You could go to New Smyrna, DAB. You know, so that is, uh, that's your range in a Cessna, you know, because you're not going to be up at high altitude. It's the altitude that helps you too. So you still have a better glide ratio than a Cessna. But you can see that's a lot of coverage. And then most, half of it's water. So if you were to move inland, if we were to move these circles inland, I didn't layer them, so I can't move them. But if these were inland, like if this was over Orlando, we could land at um, Orlando, Orlando exec. We could live at, land at Sanford. Uh, we could live. We could land at Kissimmee. We could land at Titusville. Uh, da, 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 uh, Leesburg, I think, has an airport we could land at. We could probably go into uh, Port Canaveral Naval Air Station. So, you know, there you'd have a, another good 8, 9, 10 reasonable airports you could land at. So that's the benefit with the jet is the altitude and, um, you know, you can you have a reasonable glide ratio. You can go to a lot of places, you know, and uh, you have a reasonable glide. So that's kind of the short and skinny of it. You'd just rather not lose both engines. It's unlikely to lose both engines. You're usually gonna you're usually gonna have to ingest something to lose both engines. What do you mean? I'm debating making a tent for Cap Air. Having trouble building a nose of a heli. Uh, like what kind of, like what kind of heli you're trying to build? A, you know, helis can be very variable on noses. Like if we look at, you know, like if we look at something like this, this is a completely enclosed. Can't this one's pretty basic too? That was just mostly a mock-up. You know, Katie has the engine in the nose, and it's a double stack. This is a little bit more rounded out. I don't like big bubbles. I don't need them. Uh, so this doesn't have a big bubble on it. This one's a little bit more bubbly. The gnat, you see the gnat is all bubble, and then it has a simple T, T gauge cluster on it. So you can build something like that if you want more viz. This has a little bit more of a rounded executive nose on it with a little bit of visibility on the side paneling. That's kind of, you just kind of have to practice and play with it. I would look at reference material of what you're trying to achieve and kind of see the shapes and just you gotta, gotta kind of just go and build with it pretty much. Yeah, static it would be interesting. Yeah, truck show would be interesting. Maybe if they don't do a truck show, I'll consider it sometime. Yep, truck and car show would be kind of cool. I think that would be a little bit easier because, for example, they don't want... They're afraid of people doing shenanigans and taking off. And so, like, it's pretty easy to, like... Like, here, I could do this in, like, five minutes to get this ready for... Get out of there. I could, um... I'm going to lose my mind here in two seconds if I can't find the button I'm looking for. There it is. Uh, like this is pretty easy to make so that to render this undrivable done you know so now this is not uh, this is not drivable <laughs> you know, took, took all of two seconds here you know uh, make it static you pretty much you know it has no engine anyway but you could pretty much just go constant on And now you have a static display for a truck, you know. And they're also tend to be smaller, so you know you could quickly just kind of go up, put it put it on it, sit it on a peg here. You know, so you could even even further incapacitate this because they don't want people at you know, trying to steal something and take off and act a fool, which makes sense during the static display. So, like you can see, you could just quickly, very quickly make a platform for something 
a truck and now you can easily convert your truck over into uh, into a static display you know and it can be small and compact you know so that's kind of uh, I think a truck truck show would be a little bit easier probably Yeah, Manticore is kind of cool. Like a lot of my stuff, like the stuff I focus on is very much the way it flies, because that's what's most important to me. Because it's like you know, I'm an actual pilot. I want to want to have it fly right. Like the Manticore is interesting, but a lot of the interesting. Well, I don't want. Oh, I pressed the button. That's why. Like the Manticore is interesting. Enable stop rotor, release parking brake. Okay, this number got finished. Manticore is a deadly beast. I was trying to see if, uh, if that was forward prop it is. And then once you get up to a certain speed, the rotor stop. Because it doesn't need them anymore. It can use the wings. It has enough airspeed to use the wings. So that's kind of its showstopper. And it has things like Big Bad Gun. And then as we slow down, the rotors will re-engage, which is kind of a cool feature. I haven't played with missiles in a while since uh, they got redone. Thanks. Station four, maybe. I don't know what station four is. What's station four. I don't know. Maybe I knocked my. Yeah, I dropped my fuel tank. I was trying to think what station four was. This is my fuel tank. Manticore could be interesting. How's it going there, FS? Yeah. They had some reasonably specific rules, but I don't think they were that that onerous. That'd be cool. Yep. Yeah, you kind of you know the best way to learn some of these things is you gotta you gotta build them, find out, you know what the. Uh, issues are with them. I think I might take a break here in a second. Let me see if there's anything else I want to kind of look at or work on. But yeah, I could see some of that. I don't know if I'm going to do something for that or not, but uh, we'll consider. Let's play with this uh, really quickly. I want to do a quick couple of tests. So I changed it. I was talking earlier in the video. I, I made it so that it's a little bit uh, more controllable on on how fast that boom goes because pretty much before it's pretty much boom goes up boom goes down and it kind of flipped the container on the issue being that there are certain instances where you need to use the wheels to help you so I want to see if I can make this uh, what if those changes help me okay so get an infant electricity off I want to make sure that this works the way it should okay so we'll go one I need to press the button there we go Extend that. Okay, we'll drag it in, and now we'll press one again. You're like, I can't get it to stop. Okay, I just I just got it to stop, but it uh, 
So that works fine. You see how it rolls? Now the issue is getting it to come off of me. If I go two, it really does not want to push off. So I have to do the inchworming. Like, see, it does not want to come off. And so I wonder if um, that removes the brakes. I can't remember the disconnect. Let me see if I can find disconnect on here. Here. Ah, come on. I don't want to do that. I just want to press the left left mouse key. There it is. All right. Release connectors false. I need to try to remember how I release the connectors. I think it's the connector release. Okay, that's false. I need to check something here. It's not releasing the connectors, so it's never going to be able to push off if it's not releasing the connectors. So let's see what uh, release connectors is being governed by. It's not. Okay. Did I take that functionality or just disconnect it? That's track break, park break. Okay. Track brakes, okay. Park brake. Track brake, park brake, okay. So I need a release connector. Let's see if I have a node for that. All right, uh, nope, that's the other release connectors, okay. I need release grippers here. What is that? That's steering. That's such a small footprint, too. I don't have a ton of microcontroller space. Drive, arm, arm two, tracks, connected. Okay. Oh, come on, man. Let's see if I can't get... Uh... I'm just going to do a quick toggle button, and then I'll see if... Uh... See if this proof of concept works, then I'll have to try to figure if I can add it somewhere. Right. I need to load the container in. Should have done it with the one with the container here. We still have an autosave. Okay. Let's test this out, see if this will work. Ah, it's bond, dude. There you go. But I really wish the remote was better. The remote's annoying me that I just can't get it the way I want it. And that's kind of crap. So, like, see, I can I can roll it towards the container to help facilitate its attachment. And now what I need to do is I need to go like that. And then uh, try to raise it. So. And then I need to back up. See, this is what I needed to go slow, so I could try to grab it. With that's the issue. Uh, you know, I can still it still works. I can inchworm my way out. There we go. Okay. Why is it? Oh, I didn't press the one key again. So I need to like drive away while I push. It. I accidentally clicked off of it, then it misbehaved. So I accidentally clicked off and it misbehaved. All right, let's go in some. All right, stop, you devil. All right, that's toggled. So, like, I need it there for the traction, but it, it would rather flip that, so it's kind of... I have to kind of do the inchworm. It's just, it's too small. It's not going to have enough leverage because it has a very long, very short wheelbase. So it's, I just kind of have to live with the way it is. All right. Let me check. Let me finish up chat and I think take a break.
Uh, yeah, you have to post that at FS. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, guys, I think I'm going to uh, end it up there. Thank you for, thank you to Citrus for uh, resubscribing. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, Career Build Series came out yesterday. Go ahead and watch that. I will be working on the uh, build reviews. You know, I pretty much, for the first one here, I just uh, picked my fifth. There were two that I was thinking for the fifth uh, for the fifth one, the one that I pick. And I, I couldn't decide between two of them, so I just picked the one that had more community votes. So go ahead, and when it reopens, uh, if you didn't get picked, resubmit. And that way, uh, you know, you can get yours reviewed next time, maybe. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.